just a rubber pussy bucket cup. <laughs> and you... I don't know why they call it the Diva Cup. They should call it the rubber the pussy... The rubber pussy bucket <laughs> cup is such a better name. Are you ready for this? Let's play. Oh, we're we gonna come in hot too, but let's go. You coming in hot? We're both coming in hot? Yep. Mine's probably much less hot than yours. Let's go. KSU Radio, double coming in hot. What do you got? I mean, I just saw this tweet like as we were walking in here. <clears throat> do you hear about the new women's soccer team in what? LA? What? No. Okay. New Fill women's, me in. New women's soccer team. For the MLS or some shit? Uh, or whatever. NWLS, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the headline Actress Natalie Portman, tennis star Serena Williams, and her daughter, Alexis Olympia Ohanian how it's pronounced, <clears throat> are part of a majority woman-founded group that will own the newest soccer team in the United States. Right. Now, I was like, fuck, that's like, I, time must have flown by because Serena Williams' daughter is young. No, it's the same girl. She's two years old. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> fuck she's, off. She's a two-year-old. She's a majority right? owner. And here are the other names. Fuck off. And these are the other women who bought the team. Uh... Let me know if you recognize any of them. Eva Longoria, Jennifer Garner, Jessica Chastain, uh, Mia Hamm, uh, Joy Fawcett, Abby Wambach. Like, monster names got buried for Serena Williams' two-year-old. What does that mean? You you're a, bought the you're team. a baby. What is you're it? a fucking baby. You, you don't, don't own a team. You're a baby. Like, I, I, I Honestly, like I want someone to explain to me. What does it mean that Serena Williams' daughter bought a team? It means that Serena Williams bought a team, right? Yeah, I mean, you probably can like do some shit where you put a name. trust. Yeah, you put like, it in her name, but it's like... But Serena paid for it. Like, she bought the team. That's that's all Serena Williams' money. Or I, I guess not, because Serena Williams isn't the breadwinner in her family. Yeah, she's the fucking... She's the peasant, right? right? <laughs> like, uh, Reddit homeboy is worth It's all uh, Alexis Ohanian's yeah. money, right? Well, I mean, obviously, it's some sort of, you know... Uh, figurehead-ish type of thing. Uh, yeah, but I like, imagine. <laughs> but I but I'm but I'm wondering if it's even if there are if it's even possible or if she's just saying that. Or is there something like in the paperwork that's like I mean the, she's an owner. She she posted on Instagram about it, the two-year-old, to her six hundred thousand followers. Oh my <laughs> god, I'm gonna chop my own head off right now. Like what if it says something if the, uh, my point being is there paperwork that says like upon eighteen, turning eighteen, she can like make decisions for the fucking blah blah blah. But like something. I would guess no, because if I was a fucking other investor, I'd be like, let's see how what the two-year-old plays out. Yeah. <laughs> before what if this two-year-old <laughs> sucks? I'm trying to find, excuse me, I just had a this spicy salad. fucking baby. It's, it's like, I was, I, I thought I was the idiot. And then, and then I started lashing out because like, no, I wasn't the idiot. I was the fucking <laughs> right one. And you're, you're the idiot. You're so the stupid. The world is the idiot. For explaining it like that. Like the fucking. Also, by the way, I think this whole thing is like. How many did they just pick every female uh, like superstar in the world, and I they mean, all like pony up like five bucks for? The, I mean, how much can a fucking women's soccer team cost? I I feel like Dave could buy that shit like cash in his pocket right now. That's true. There, I would. I there. I'm, I there were some numbers. I can look at. Let, I can yeah, look let, at. Let's see. I, I wonder because like if uh, if you take you know what I heard to be upwards of like a dozen of like superstar females who all make a decent amount of money. Uh, they all they need to put up you know a fraction of their net worth to get to own this team. No, they, they really aren't numbers. We're, the numbers are really more about viewers and stuff like that. It's a twenty two percent increase in attendance since last year, and I don't know. It's a big league, but like I don't know how big a league it is. But I mean, I, yeah, I, I can't imagine it's a crazy amount of money. Like that's, I would imagine they both put in. They all put in. A little fifty like k, a, a little chunk of change. Yeah, where it's like, I mean, by the way, I'm surprised by this. How much do you think an MLS, like a male team, costs? Uh I mean, they can't be that expensive. Will Farrell owns one, right? Like, so you don't have to have like billionaire cash. No, but but how much do you think? If, since you're asking, that obviously skews me. I'm gonna guess one fifty, three hundred, three hundred. Yeah. This was from Forbes. Uh, right, so Will the average MLS basement. team is now three hundred thirteen million, up thirty percent from last year. So that's good. For, I mean, that means the MLS is doing some things. Um, but you know, I think a uh, there's a got to be a. I mean, the MLS is still kind of a joke, and then I would imagine the female uh, league is still just barely getting off the ground. So it can't, uh, it can't uh, have cost that much money. No. So and, and especially, yeah, like you said, when you have because that didn't even list all the names, and it was like a dozen members of the U.S. 
yeah. women's national team. Yeah. Like, was it? I mean, also, are you girls going to play on the team? Because you're like pretty Abby fucking Wambach good. Like them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 I don't know. If I bought a soccer team and was a world-class, I mean, the reigning World Cup champion, I'd probably be like, hey, guys. I'll get out there. You want you want to sell <laughs> sweat uh, jerseys? Yeah. You want to sell tickets? For real. Like we're gonna make money just by being like a, a popularity thing. Right. Forget about the. Uh, I mean, that is um, that's infuriating all around. That's bothering me like crazy all around. But I guess that's it, what is it? Beyonce, who like every um, everyone on tour with her is a female. Didn't she do that once? She had like a, a girls' tour. Where it was like every dancer, every everything. So this I'm is just. Gonna, I'm sure this is just gonna be like top to bottom women. Fine, I get it. No babies. <laughs> no babies. Okay? No children. And not even, you know, not even when I'm talking about teenagers. I'm talking about babies. A, 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 an absolute baby who, a, I mean, can, baby. can she speak English yet? Or I mean, knowing English? knowing the Serena and Reddit dude, he, he probably speaks like four languages. Well, I just don't even know like, shit, when do but, babies start talking. Uh, around two. Start two. babbling a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So the, yeah, no, so the answer two, to the question no, is no. No, by two, they're, they're, they're cooking. Like, Keegan, Keegan just turned three, but he's been talking for a while. Really? But yeah, two... To, uh, to, he's babbling. She's babbling. Not enough Bab- to be at a fucking board meeting <laughs> for your new sports franchise. You're a baby. What are you hot about? Something very different. Yeah. Twizzlers. Twizzlers. Garbage candy. Terrible. An absolute garbage candy. And I know yeah. that I hate licorice. I know black licorice has no reason to be in existence. That is Absolute and utter trash. Right, for sure. Black licorice is red, like honestly, eating, red licorice doesn't either. No, but 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 black licorice is like eating like tar. It's like it tastes like the ground. It's it's disgusting. But I saw a bag of Twizzlers. Yeah, no, I, I saw the bag of Twizzlers out there on the front desk, and I thought that's crazy to have that as our. We it's almost like we like to spit in the face of people who come to the office. Especially now, you're gonna put your paws in there and grab some rope, and your fingers are all over it, and it's just you know, it's not like you can grab a little candy with a wrapper. We're talking raw dog Twizzlers. That's trash, and also probably not conducive to a pandemic. But They're, I looked at it, and I know I don't like these, but I remember, I remember doing the Twizzler straw. Yeah, know? I remember eating them here and there. Probably got him at a movie once in a while. Never. I thought uh, I thought that maybe this would be, maybe I would take a bite and be like, huh, I haven't had one of these in a while. And I took a bite. And I wholeheartedly regretted it to the point that it it makes me question why these are even in existence. It, it makes no sense. Why but it does is licorice like, exist? I think it's something we we do at Barcelona. We, we intend, I, I remember like before the pandemic started, we would have bowls of candy out there. And it was pure, like, Marshmallows, marshmallows, and whatever they're called. The, marshmallows? <laughs> no, like the candy. It's like a, a Malo bar. Or oh, something Malo like that. Mars, yeah, a Malo Mars. I don't um, think we had Malo, Mar- Malo we, Mars out there, did we? It was like a, one a, one of those type candies, and then it was just like in the same bowl. It was like lifesaver mints. Yeah, it's disgusting. It was it well, was there, just there bottom of the barrel garbage candy. I feel like if you work at an office, if you're the receptionist, the office manager, whatever. You know, it's your job to maybe put some candy on that counter. And I feel like what people do is they buy garbage candy for that. Yeah. It's like you go to, like, garbagecandybowl.com. It's like, hey, do you work in an office? Do you need a bowl of garbage candy to put out for your uh, for your visitors? Here you go. Like, the um, uh, the strawberries that are wrapped up in a strawberry yeah, yeah, yeah. wrapper, those are strictly. Those are good, though. Yeah, because you got the little goo inside too. I, I couldn't tell you because I've never eaten no, those one. Are pretty because I have self respect. <laughs> because I have standards and I have a no, job. It's like a hard candy with a soft. That's inside. disgusting. No, I, and, that, and that has never. But you have never eaten that anywhere outside of just at a desk at an office, right? Um, like a Nana's house. Fine, same yeah. thing. You're either a hundred, and, and that that goes for Werther's original butterscotch caramel. I actually like caramels, mm-hmm. but those things are either for ancient people. Or shitty candy in an office, and I feel like that's like they have a. And it's so easy. We live above a. Du- well, not live. We work above a Dwayne Reed. Just there's you, just, you, and, you and just, candy but just get like, um, I pr- I prefer Milky Way, but I know it's not popular. Get like Snickers. Oh, Milky Way. Get Snickers, Snickers little, uh, yeah. you know, the little square ones. Real simple game. Get uh, some Hershey Kisses. Get There's plenty of chocolate out there. You know what I said to Enrique? I looked at it. I said, oh, Twizzlers. Like, I haven't seen that in a while. And he was like, yeah, dig in. And I was like, I did. And then I should have walked back there, and I should have slapped him in the face with this. <laughs> I should have whipped him in the face with this licorice and said, what are you doing? <laughs> It's a bad look for Barstool Sports. I'm the guy who was making terrorist jokes a couple weeks ago, and this is a worse look for Barstool Sports by putting Twizzlers out here. Christ almighty. This is, this, 
this doesn't even, this shouldn't be in existence, let alone, how about this? Twizzler is like the Cadillac of, of licorice. Oh, yeah, Red Vines. What about the, uh, the I was going to say Red Rose. I've red Vines? Never had a Red Vine. I mean, that's like eating. I, you know what I will defend a Twizzler on? Like the stuffed Twizzlers. What's in, you can what's get like a sour stuffed Twizzler. And well, it's like, then, yeah, yeah. And it's just like you're changing the candy. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's a completely different candy. But uh, they, I, I can fuck with those. The red ropes, red vines, is like eating a shoelace. It's like eating dental floss. <laughs> it's like we took dental floss, made it uh, a little bit thicker, and you're going to chew on that now. Disgusting all around. Fuck babies who own sports teams. Fuck, fuck Twizzlers. Fuck, fuck licorice. <laughs> Especially black licorice, but red licorice, too. You can all fucking kick rocks. Today's show is brought to you by Owens Mixers, primarily the uh, the barstool transfusion, but Owens Mixers has it all. They got the mint cucumber lime mix, which I'll put in just about any goddamn thing. I'll just drink that straight. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't even need to mix it up. I'll do the. I'll drink the vodka straight, and then just mi- drink the <laughs> the mixer straight. Uh, it's just like uh, Charlie Kelly. People drink mixers, <laughs> um, but they. Last got- time you saw someone drinking straight mixer. <laughs> Fucking yesterday, Charlie, I was having a mint cucumber one. <laughs> They've got the uh, the grape juice, ginger ale, transfusion mix. Comes in the little can. You mix it up with some New Amsterdam vodka. You got yourself a perfect summertime drink. And Lord knows we fucking need it right now. This goddamn heat wave is going to kill it's, me. It, what's going to kill me is is changing from this office to outside. Oh. Back to the office, back to outside. Yeah, that's going to get you sick. You know when, like, in the, in the fall when you're always like, oh, the temperature change gets me sick? Well, that's what we're doing artificially with the fucking building. It's so cold in here. It's so hot. It, every day it feels like uh, you're going to Epcot and ride, like, the test dummy ride. Where it's like we haven't, but I know that they're cold as shit. It's like so. you know, you get like freeze cold, and it's like you're moving through, and it's like gets to be like 180 degrees and like oh, negative oh. 50 degrees oh. in like a two. And it, I mean, it's, you know, you're in there very short period yeah. of time, and yeah. it's like you know, it's not the room's not on fire, right. but the it's like two back to back. We're like, oh, that's hot. Oh, that's fucking cold. That's where we live right yeah. now. That's what we do. Uh, so you got to have yourself a nice refreshing drink. And that's what the, uh, the the transfusion mix gives you. It's crisp, refreshing flavor with real grape juice and your ginger ale. It's made in the USA, and you can get it right now on the Owens site or at the Barstool store, or you can head up to a uh, liquor store near you, check out the store locator to find out if you can buy it, and uh, go to store.barstoolsports.com. Get yourself some Owens mixers. We've got uh, some comedians on the show today, right? we got Paul Verzi and Rosebud Baker on the show. Um, we'll get into our, uh, voicemails. Of course, we got to do some, am I the assholes? The, uh, I, I, uh, we have, we have two comedians on the show today and I kind of get being a comedian, if you will. Oh, if, if this makes oh, this sense. should be good. Yeah, <laughs> I, we did the helicopter ride. Whatever you're about to say, comedians are going to be like so offended by. <laughs> All right. So I did that helicopter ride the other day and, uh, my first time kind of being around complete strangers. Yeah. Since because Which is weird to think of. It's like, you know, you would be around a lot of people at a bar or we would do a live show or you'd go to an event or something. It, you've seen people, but they're only people you know. Yeah. And, like, and there are people in the room, but like they're in their own conversations kind of deal. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I'm at a bar, I would sit at my table, all that stuff. But this is my first time being like, I guess having an audience, if you will, uh-huh. and <laughs> so they say, sit us down. Probably, probably only like uh, seven to ten people in the room, and you're watching um, like a safety video, like you watch before, like a I don't know, some ride. Here's how to use your uh, seatbelt. Yeah, how to use that in kind case of, of emergency. Yeah, that yeah. kind of shit. And because I'm such an asshole, I was like making fun of the video. Mm-hmm. And just saying things and interrupting the safety lesson to like point out little fucking jokes I saw, and. When I tell you I was killing the room, <laughs> it is it is an understatement. I had like they were like tourists. One with this was this spider's actually walking around in the jacket right now. It's big pink jacket. Yeah. One was uh, a little Asian girl in like a big purple jacket and then shorts. And I was she looked, because she looked, you, yeah, you're gonna have to get some weird. You're gonna get the tourists doing the helicopter rides. You're gonna get some wackos. You're gonna get a, an eclectic mix there. Yeah, and it was just and like Johnny's just slaying the room, crushing it, Kevin. The video was and, and like it was almost like they knew I was coming and they wanted me. They're like, we gotta let this kid get his jokes off because like they're showing you how to empty like how to empty your pockets into like a you know a bin to store things safely. Yeah, and all that. And the guy goes, guys, stand there. It's only, you know, it's just like a shot of his waist or, you know, let's say belly button to upper leg. This is dick. And then he's like, you know, the guy's just reaching his pockets. It's like keys in the jar, phone in the jar, wallet in the jar, 
he puts a clementine in there. And I was just like, who the hell walks around with a clementine? And people were like, ah! <laughs> You're like, don't get me wrong. I wasn't really bringing A material, but I was just saying something, and it made me just miss the days of like, being like that dickhead in high school, yeah. and like being that dickhead in middle school, and being that dickhead in elementary school. Basically, getting a captive audience that can't run I, away and I, has I to I laugh at just, my jokes. I could comment all the time on teachers, and people would be like, yeah. "Oh, got him, like, got like, him, <laughs> dude." I, I I wonder if uh, the the like rest I of that room, that. the rest of the room, might have gone home and been like, huh, "I was around people for the first time in months, and there was this guy. <laughs> he slayed, dude. He absolutely <laughs> killed it." I don't even remember what the other ones were, but they were like three or four. In a five or ten minute video, I had like three or four solid outbursts of laughter <laughs> where I was like looking around like, man. Yo, that's enough to put you on cloud nine right feeling, there. Dude, I was I was higher leaving that room than I was in the helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that that is uh that's like a, a Costanza scene from Seinfeld. Like, I'm surprised you went on the I would have been like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going home. You guys I'll be, you know what? I'm not even gonna go in the helicopter. I'll be back for the three o'clock ride, <laughs> and I'm gonna do that. The four p.m. same as the three p.m. Let's do the Clementine joke. Let's run. I'm back. I gotta refine my material. I gotta work up my timing a little bit. Oh man, I wish I remember the other things because again, they weren't <laughs> like genius jokes, but they the were. The bar's low right now. The bar's on the floor right now. Yo, if we maybe we should get back out there and do some of these fucking uh, you know uh, driving shows and and and, and weird the uh, you know standing on a truck because people are ready to laugh at anything, laughing at Clementine jokes. <laughs> I mean, it was absurd. It was it was definitely one of those like he's just. Pointing out what everyone is thinking, because yeah, who yeah. just has a clementine in their pocket? Well, maybe that's uh, maybe that was intended. Maybe they're like, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna make sure these motherfuckers watch. Well, yeah, we'll watch, and then we're just gonna spend the next thirty to forty-five seconds laughing at that hysterical guy in the room who pointed <laughs> out the absurdity of having a clementine in your pocket. He was pretty handsome too. <laughs> he was, was well dressed. Like, this guy was just a superstar. I don't think anyone's ever fucking. I don't. I I would posit to you that. Less than 1% of the population has ever put a clementine in their pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a very conducive, you know, to, even if you needed to, wanted to, it's like a bulging thing. And, and, and you're going to squish it. Like, you're, you're safer putting an apple in your pocket than a clementine. Because it's just sturdier? Yeah. It's harder to get it clementine's in there. Clementine's just, a, clementine's borderline date more dangerous than a grape. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, grapes are so small, they're hard to break them. Well, clementine has a, 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 a skin. I called? wish we had Clementine right here. I'd just try and break it. Yeah, the skin. Yeah, just squeeze it. <laughs> Is that what it's called? The skin? No, you uh, peel. Peel, you peel, peel the skin. You peel off. the skin? Oh, yeah. I don't fucking know. I don't know either. Clearly, I'm not a big fruit guy. I haven't had many Clementines in my day. But Clementines are fire. Yeah, no, I mean, I guess I, I've, I've probably had more Clementines than any other fruit. Because yeah. I'm, I'm such an addicted personality that I'll sit there and eat 17 Clementines. Well, that was there was a few things in life that I... Uh, you know, when you grow up, like you mostly eat like what you you only eat what your parents get you, mm. really. You know, and then when you're like, uh, you, you know, you start to get your own taste. But really, when I went to college, was the first time I started to like, all right, I'm gonna go grocery shopping for my dorm or whatever, and like, I'm gonna buy what I want. And clementines were like the thing that I was like, I've never had one of these, and I you get them in the, like the bag or the box. You know what I mean? Whoa, Jenga! Wow. Um. I don't think you could hear it on our mics, but yeah. Holy moly. That was a big Jenga moment. Big, and big. then it just cut off. That yeah. must have been like a everyone hoop, hoop, right, like, right, hooting right. holler. Uh anyway, I bought Clementines to me was like the first thing that I was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be a Clementine guy now. I got that. I had the weirdest things in my mind, like Febreze. Never had Febreze in my life until I got to college. I was like, I'm gonna fucking get Febreze. I've never been a free for 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 bleh, Febreze guy myself. Never? never had it. Never. We don't, like, we don't use it in my house. You don't. Mm. Didn't do do it in college. Well, now I mean the classic thing. Like when I smell Febreze, I just think of like a shitty dorm room. You know. Oh. Like when sense. I smell Febreze, I smell shit covered by Febreze. <laughs> it's like it's not a good smell. It's like when I smell fresh linens. Now I think of someone just took a big shit. You know. Oh, okay. I think like actually a fresh bed. You mean like a Febreze bed? I'm or saying Febreze room. Febreze room. Yeah, it's yeah. like this is just like did someone shit on the floor here? Is that why you're <laughs> trying to cover it up? But clementines, I tried to like make a fruit that I like. If I had to pick a fruit, what's your favorite fruit? I don't really care for fruit. Me much, neither. But not, not a fruit duo here. If I had to, probably a strawberry. Mm, I, a watermelon for me. Chocolate covered. Yeah. It's not like if I could get it done that way on a stick. <laughs> what's the difference between a clementine and a tangerine? Uh, 
Don't know. Isn't there another one too? There's a third one. I was gonna say macadamia. It's not macadamia. Yeah, like a, a mandarin. Yeah, mandarin, mandarin, clementine, tangerine. Yeah. You guys, you know, you get you got too many names. Too many get names. under the same fucking umbrella. Uh, should we do a little "Am I the asshole"? Let's fucking do it. Let's fucking go. Am you I the one? asshole today? Um, nope. I was gonna say you're. Uh, I might good have a that. couple uh, liked. We'll see. Am I the yeah. asshole today? Is brought to you by Cuts Clothing. I just got uh, another package of cuts sent to my house. I got, uh, you know what I like about Cuts? The names of the colors. Like they had a, uh, uh, a shirt that was called, the color was Nine Iron. And it was like a steel blue gray sort of thing. Oh, that is like, a good name. Yeah. There was, right. uh, I didn't notice that. That's pretty it good. It was like a red color. I think it was called Rust or something like that. And it was a red. Uh, so they got all sorts of different colors that are, but they're all uh, simple, designed, monochromatic. You're not going to worry about um you know, stupid designs all over it. It's very sleek. It's very adult. It's very good for the for the modern man who just wants to look sharp, but you don't want to look uh, like you know you're not you're not wearing some silly brand with some silly logo. Uh, you get all different types of t shirts and long sleeve shirts. You got the Henley on top, or the crew neck, or the V neck. You've also got the split hem on the bottom, the elongated uh, bottom, or the scoop hem. So you mix and match the different tops, bottoms, colors, and uh, styles, and you can have a whole wardrobe there. You can have you know ten t-shirts, ten Henleys, ten long sleeves, all different colors, and you are covered for every season, every occasion. You're going to work, you're going on a date, you go out, you're lounging around the house. They're uh, it's like very soft material, so it's comfortable as well as stylish. So whether you're just trying to kick back or whether you're trying to look sharp, uh, you've got Cuts Clothing. They've got you covered. So go to uh, CutsClothing.com. Use the promo code uh, KFC. No, sorry, CutsClothing.com slash KFC, and you'll get 15% off the only shirt worth wearing. Athletes wear it. Entrepreneurs wear it. Podcast hosts like us wear it. Uh, everyone's looks good rocking at them, it. too. Yeah, it's uh, they're, I look good, or they, we they, all look good. I think everyone looks good. Yeah, them, it does. It's, a, it's very, a nice form fit. Yeah, it, it's, it's very, it's cut right. It's like I feel like you know other t-shirts is you get them off the rack or buy them off the shelf and they're boxy and baggy and these are like it's the adult t-shirt is really what it is. Yeah, the adult shirt going. at Cuts. Uh, go to cutsclothing.com slash KFC fifteen percent off. Let's do some asshole talk. All right, I think I got one here. Hit me. Am I the asshole for throwing up in front of the kids when forced to babysit? Throw away because this is embarrassing AF. Hopefully nobody will nobody breathe a word of it outside except for this post. It's one of the top posts on Emily. Yeah, so. <laughs> I don't I don't understand the people like who are like shit that went viral. Like, that's what you're trying to do, isn't yeah, it? Like, right. Well, I think you're really just trying to get your question answered. To be honest. Yeah. Like, well, then you shouldn't fucking track it. Once you get one answer deleted. Yeah. Right. Right. It's, it's like uh, you know enough people have weighed in. Uh, now we're done. Um, I, 18 year old female, live in a rather small house with eight other members. With eight, eight other members. My parents, my younger sister, older sister, her husband, and three kids. Five, five female, four male, two male. Babysitting my little niece and nephews and my sister and brother-in-law work is one of our common duties, besides housework. It is usually me and sometimes my younger sister. It's not so bad once you're used to it. Last week, I was feeling terrible. Nausea, dry throat, stuffy nose. I took a day leave from my school and kept to my room. However, in the afternoon, my mother woke me up from the nap and asked me to watch the kids while she got out to, got out to buy something. I told her that I was feeling terrible, but she insisted, saying that I, I should have been sleeping the whole morning and should have some should get up some fresh air that she's not a good writer. Uh, unwillingly, I had to pick up my youngest nephew and try to encourage him to play toys while the other two play with themselves nearby. My head was spinning, but I had but I thought I had just gone I thought I'd just go back to bed when my mother comes back. It was fine for a while until I accidentally let my nose too near his re- it was fine for a while. It was fine for a while until I accidentally let my nose too near his head. His head was terribly clean smell for a reason. Oh come on, man! Like help me what? out here. What? Despite his head had this terrible smell for some reason, despite looking very clean. Anyway, the smell triggered a gag reflex, and after a brief blackout, I threw up all over the toys. The older two started shrieking, and the youngest one, amused by the contents, a little kicked the toys and spread the puke further. Oh boy. Starting to get it myself here. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say uh, this, this one hits close to home. 
I was I was busy giving the youngest one a shower when my mom came home and my father, sister, and brother in law all did too. Everyone saw what went on. The other two kids were throwing up themselves for some reason. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'm picturing the Family Guy episode yeah, where everyone's just puking on everything. Anyway, I don't really remember much details of the later parts besides passing the toddler to my sister. Took a shower myself, went back to bed. Somebody other than me cleaned up the mess. My mother was convinced that I did this on purpose to spite her for babysitting. My sister and father were more horrified that I passed the germs and virus to kids by being sick. My younger sister blames me, too, because after that incident, all the babysitting jobs went to her instead. <laughs> all I could use to defend myself was, hey, I never asked to babysit, which apparently was the wrong answer, too, because it means I don't like my niece and nephew. This is kind of a bad one. I'm sorry for wasting everyone's time. Um... Edit, thanks for the concerns. This all happened last week, and I'm fully recovered. However, after this incident, the family has been more skeptical with, with me in handling the kids. Thus, most of the jobs go to my sister. Also, for info, my sister was pretty upset at my mother, too, because she disagreed with the idea that I could pass the virus, especially that virus, but also on me because I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I apologize. I don't know. I, that one's... I, you're not the asshole for getting sick, I don't think. Um, well, it's tough right now to be thrown up on kids. If there's ever been a, a time in human history, you don't want to be puking on people, especially children. But you're like, I mean, this that's not what the sickness is. Right. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? When like, everyone's worried about germs and you're puking on kids, that's going to be, you know, hey, will you babysit my kids? I puked all over them. Not going to go over well. But if I, if, will I babysit your kids? Like, no, I'm sick. Babysit my kids. Fine. I guess I will. Guess what? I got fucking sick by yeah, the kids. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. I thought this was more of like a gag reflex thing. This, this is just, she's sick and, and. It triggered it, but she's puking because she's sick. Yeah, she's taking so, the day uh, off from bed. If she's taking the day off from you school, you cannot ask someone to babysit your kids when they're like, "I'm sick, I can't do it," and they're just like, "No, nah, you got to do it anyway." You got to do it. I mean, that's you know what you do. I mean, you should throw up on them on purpose. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, would, I told you this was going to happen. If you did this on purpose, you wouldn't have been the asshole. Right. Like that. That is. Uh, and you know what? You never have to babysit again. Yeah, it's a, this is a pretty huge win for I would here. I would preemptively do this. Like, next time someone, you know, asks me to babysit, be like, sure. Uh, but, like, here, you know, your kid comes home covered in puke and, like, uh, <laughs> he's bleeding and uh, Who's drunk. Who is it? Like, I don't fucking know. I don't even know. We were <laughs> all just you, puking on each other. I told you I'm a bad babysitter. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, no, but you, you, you kind of are the asshole for puking on kids just in general, but you're not the asshole. If you were drunk, this. you're the asshole. Yeah. You're sick. Like, I mean, I don't know. People who are sick get sick sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah that's, that's tough. Also, what was it though? She smelled his head? He just had his head had a terrible smell for some reason. Like sounds like he just hate children. Yeah, <laughs> like, the the scent of of children making me I mean, puke. I do think that's one of the stupid things that people insist is true. Like the what the babies smell good. Like a baby's head smells delicious or whatever it is. Like you know what it is. It's like babies usually smell like baby shampoo. <laughs> it's like you give them a bath and they smell clean because it's fucking Johnson and Johnson. It's, it's not the baby itself smells it's good. Any anyone who like gets babies into are smelling in shit things. Piss. Are like so weird to me. Like, like people who like like smelling dogs' feet. They smell like Fritos. You ever seen that? People like that. My college roommate kept doing it. We smell. we got a dog and he just kept smelling our dog's feet. It was so the fucking feet. weird. Yep, it's psychotic. It's psychotic. You take the, the paw, like the bottom of the yep. paw. Yep. I can't believe you never heard of this. I've never even. Yeah. Never like, even. Oh, I like to smell this. his feet and like I see. But basically, crazy dog people do that with their, their dog's feet. And then crazy baby people do it with their baby's head. And like I'm always just like, what the fuck is wrong with all of you? Just stop smelling like those are both fairly intimate things. Like a baby's head and a dog's foot are just like I don't know. But I but I really do believe that like I think that the baby smell is gonna come from seriously soap and baby powder and that kind of shit. Baby wipes. The dog's paws, they dogs piss on their own feet. You ever see a dog do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they lift their leg, and there's a puddle that runs down the sidewalk and just runs all over their paws. <laughs> They're in dirt and shit and ground, and you smell the bottom of their paw, and it smells like Fritos? Fritos, they say. Yeah, I believe that's what it is. Yeah, I ne I, I never smelt it. But I don't like Fritos. Consistent. Couldn't even tell you what they smell like. Corn but chips. That's not that good of a smell. No, it's not, it's not a smell yeah. worth seeking out. And it's out. certainly not worth you being putting your nose to a, a dirty dog's feet. No, it's fucked up. It's fucked up stuff. If you do, I've never seen this. If you do this in front of me, I'm not letting that slide. <laughs> I let everything slide. You smell a dog's bottom of a dog's paws in front of me. I'm calling you out as a fucking weirdo. That's that is. I mean, I, I definitely do. I'm like, what do you do? Like, yeah, stop doing bizarre this. behavior. Uh, this is a relationship one. 22 year old female, 20, 24 year old boyfriend. My boyfriend has left me to become a monk. Oh boy. 
it's a tough one. Uh, I met my boyfriend over a year ago. He's funny, good looking, kind, incredibly intelligent. Love him very much. We never had any issues. He listens to me, understands my problems. And when he doesn't, he tries as hard as he can. We dare for, we care for each other deeply. He's always been a very spiritual type of guy and really interested in history which is what his bachelor's degree was in. Uh, Catholicism and monasticism. I don't know if you say that, but yeah. Uh, always thought it was a curiosity, touch of sentimentalism. A lot of big fucking words here. He would also talk about his dislike of the material world, a belief I would share. But, you know, to some extent, both of us are left wing. Um, he would, But he would sometimes say things like, to suffer is noble. And he would talk about how honorable and fulfilling he thought a monast monastic way of life must be because you're following in the footsteps of Christ. Again, I dismissed it. I thought of it as, I mean, come on, this, this romanticization. This, this is like thesaurus.com. <laughs> um, and I just thought he was studying medieval history, whatever. Then about a month ago, he told me he was going to join a monastery and become a Franciscan. This came as a complete shock to me. I really don't know how to process this. I've been talking. I've been trying to understand it, trying to talk to him. I tried explaining how heartbroken I am. Uh, he said it was more important to separate himself from material desire in the monastery. And, uh, and she's saying, should I be happy for him? Uh, I love him, but, uh, not really sure what I, what my, what advice I'm looking for here. It's just that I don't know how to deal with this. That is a shot to the ego. Why? I I disagree. Cause I think people who go like, are do it. Are like so, nuts. Crazy. so it's like, yeah, it's not like her fault. But okay, th this is like um, this is what girls do, you know. Guy can't get his dick hard. It's me. It's like no, it's just my crazy brain. Mm. Um, you know, uh, guy guy wants to leave for the, the monastery. It must be me. No, he's it's his crazy brain. Yeah. Uh, but I would imagine that girl is sitting there thinking like, you could have a normal life with me, where we have sex and we hang out. And we go out to dinners and we spend money. We eat food. We buy nice gifts. We could do all those things. And you're just like, nah, I'd rather just live like in a fucking cave. Dude, let's, first of all, this guy's the asshole because he says things like to suffer is noble, noble or whatever. But what a brainwashed, like, that's, I mean, that's basically the, uh, like, the cornerstone of every religion. So, but I mean, how fucking stupid do you have to be to just sit around suffering your whole life? And blaming yourself for your well, whole life. Here's what I'm saying, saying: how shitty you are because of the salvation in the magical land after you die. Fuck off. I don't think there's much suffering in a monk in a monastery. I I I've you're always, borderline monk, by the way. I I know? used to always joke in high school because there were monks all over campus. I was like, dude, if things don't go right in my life. I'm coming back here and fucking living like a monk. I mean, let's think about like, it. Wait, let's break it down. <laughs> I mean, they just, they just drink all day and smoke cigars all day and watch the games with the boys at night. Well, it's like, okay. It's, like, but, but it's that, a pretty that, fucking good time. That, that is, uh, <laughs> that's not what, what you, that's what they do. But that's not what you think of when you think of monks. Right. right? But, as, but as someone who's lived it. Right. I can know. tell you, it's yeah. pretty good life. <laughs> Pretty sick. They're life. always drunk. Uh huh. They're always drunk. They, they drink. I mean, yeah. some are sober. Some you know take yeah, a vow yeah, seriously. Vow or, and, and others are like, like, yeah, I have a glass of whiskey. Walk around campus smoking a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are just bad monks. And yeah, <laughs> but you, you you don't have to be a great monk. Like, all right, but let's say we're live talking... for free. Just fucking wear dope dresses all the time, <laughs> comfy as hell, and then like. I don't know, just really, uh, yeah, you but maybe got to teach a class. Okay, but what makes, like, you say that about monks, but if I told you to go be a priest, you'd be like, nah. A priest, probably not. And also, like. But it's the same uh, shit. My thing on, on Priests monk, are drunk and gambling and fucking, you know, they got all the other vices. Yeah, I guess, they I guess they don't get to live on, like, a nice campus. Like, this like, like this was, like, a beautiful campus where you get to just, like, hang out by the water and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Got great amenities everywhere. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I don't want to live in some shitty room in the back of the church, <laughs> but, like. If I can get a dorm, the rectory, like, bro. The rectory sucks. Like, fuck the rectory, dude. The rectory is trash. <laughs> it's like here's a, a shitty dorm room for these grown ass adults. We're not gonna let you fuck. We're not gonna let you have any money, and we're gonna throw you in this like shitty closet of a fucking life. Ugh, have terrible. I, have I ever told you the time my buddy went running through the rectory? No. Oh. All right. So this is uh, my friend Chris, and he was. He was in middle school. Is, is it dead, Chris? Yeah. yeah dead Chris. Okay. <laughs> and he was in middle school and uh, was doing the um, Passion of the Christ play. It was, oh, it was like Easter or whatever. Yeah. And he was a Roman soldier who was tasked with carrying Jesus down. <laughs> and it was his buddy who was Jesus. 
And he kept fingering his buddy's ass. So like, like dead Jesus is coming down the aisle, and he keeps bouncing up and down. And eventually, Chris, as they get to the altar, oh. puts his finger so far up his ass that he just jumps out of the thing. And so the priest gets pissed. And starts running after Chris. Chris runs away into the rectory, grabs one of the microphones from the, the priest's stall because he's hiding in the closet. Yeah. And like get the microphone just hanging. And he just turns it on and he's going, Breaker, Breaker, one nine. And he, he's running around with like multiple adults chasing him as he just screams. And he finally gets outside and he starts going, This is God. <laughs> You must repent your sins. <laughs> he's what, like 13 years old? Yeah, his dad was like, worst Easter ever. <laughs> See, if my kid ever does some silly dad, if Keegan's ever doing that, I'm gonna be I'm I'm it's gonna be tough for me to put my parenting hat on. I'm gonna be that was the funniest shit I've ever fucking seen, man. By the way, I'm watching you drink this. What a illogical bottle It'd be box. Awful. You're, oh. you're like turning it sideways. <laughs> it's a, look at that. If you're watching on YouTube, Fights is drinking water out of a carton, and you got to like oh. turn your whole fucking. Because we don't have any goddamn water in this office. I know. So I have to we get it one. Twizzlers. <laughs> we have fucking Twizzlers. We don't have any goddamn water. Um, uh, but, but, okay, let me go back to monks. Let's talk about if we're talking Dalai Lama, like serious monk. You don't really like to fuck. Yeah. So, valid chastity, no big deal. Mm. Knock that out, no problem. You, I believe the whole thing about monks not talking is a little bit overblown. It's like, they talk when they're allowed to talk. Oh, and, they talk and, all the time. But but when you do do the vow of silence, which is a thing in some, like, monasteries, I think it's, like, outside of, like, when you're doing a mass or whatever it is they do, which is the podcast. You don't talk outside your podcast. No, and also they talk outside the podcast. Outside the, the mass. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? That's like the, the idea behind it. It's yeah. like, you don't have to fuck. You don't talk. All you do is talk during your podcast, and then otherwise you're silent. You don't be around other people. You're like completely secluded. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and they, um, I feel like monks are very like, well, if I fucking, you know, if I die, I die, right? It's very <laughs> like nihilistic, believe, it feels like. I believe in the afterlife, so like I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you are a monk. I'm pretty close. You're a to modern monk. man monk. Okay. Triple M over here. I'll wear that for sure. Yeah, you should start wearing robes. <laughs> Good. I that's that is a nice sweet spot I live in. I could just start wearing robes. You really could. <laughs> we all could, by the way. Especially I think the whole world can right now. If you go back to the, the to life not dressing like you used to, I think there's gonna be some people that do. What if I come in just in like fucking like a blue robe with like a red sash on it? Like, you know, they do I like love the, that you just went blue and red. Well, I was like, like I think like, you know. Oh, oh, like navy, colors. navy and red. Okay, yeah. I was thinking of like like royal blue and red, like just some <laughs> wild shit. Um, like a nineteen seventies Phillies uniform. Why don't you do it? I guess it'd be maroon, maroon. I don't know. If you if you go robe, I'll go robe with you. I, I mean, just I, I just don't want to go it. shopping for them that many robes. You know, I like I like to wear pants sometimes and shirts sometimes. Don't be a pussy. I can I can wear. I'm not going to commit to a full robe. I'll, I might pop it in a robe one day, but I can't commit to full robe life. I don't even have a robe at home. Like I don't. You like wear robes and stuff. I, don't, I, I go I through wear phases. Clothes. Like right now, I mean, I wear. I've been wearing barstool indoors, and um, I, I got like some just comfortable hoodies. I just had like my sweatpants and sweatshirt rotation going. I don't even know where my robe is. What I have is I have those half robes. They're just hoodie jackets that yeah. stop at my waist. I wear those all the fucking time. Um, but I've been, you know, hesitant to to bring it out in real life, and I think I might just. I think I just might do it. I'll, I'll support you. But you won't do it. I don't know if I'll do it. I'm just not, I'm not a robe guy. I'm not even a robe home guy. I can be a robe road guy without being a robe home guy. Yeah, I'm just saying you can embrace the monk life. You can go full monk on him. You can dabble. Dabble in the monk <laughs> world. Let's do one more. Uh, am I the asshole? We'll get into our voicemails. Uh, let's see what we got. All right, we got one here. Am I the asshole for walking around my house naked? My girlfriend works mornings, so I have the house to myself. And what do I like to do? I like to walk around naked. Uh, my girlfriend and I are the only two people who have the keys to the house, but she has a habit of lending her key out to friends. I don't have a problem with that. My only problem is that she doesn't tell me when she does it. So one morning I'm walking around naked and I hear somebody open the door and I think it's my girlfriend home early, but instead I see one of her friends. And I ran to the bedroom to put some clothes on. We had a laugh about it, but my girlfriend got pissed when my friend told her, and uh, when her friend told her and joked that I had a nice ass. My girlfriend snapped at me later and told me to stop walking around naked. And I told her that if she just, 
that if she would tell me that she lent out the key to anybody else, I would put some clothes on before they come. We agreed. I kept walking around the house naked because uh, it's my house and I have the whole place to myself. Guess what happened? Door opened one day and her friend, same one, came on in. LOL. So yeah, my girlfriend is pissed that it says that I'm the asshole. But she would have. But if she would have told me that she lent the key out again, her friend wouldn't have seen me naked again. So am I the asshole? Yep. He's the asshole. Yep. I think I think people who walk around their house naked are just fucking unnecessary dickheads. Like it's I, just it, there's no there. I, I I remember like hearing one time when I was young that like it's good for your self confidence and self esteem to like. Embrace your body and Live walk around natural. your house. Yeah. Fuck that, man. It's disgusting walking around your house naked. Put some. If you're ever gonna have people over, if you're just some fucking loser who just lives in solitude, fine. Walk around naked. Who gives a shit? Mm-hmm. If I'm coming over and sitting on your couch, I don't want your fucking asshole down the couch. Well, it's my couch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but like, it just I don't know. You're like, I, I'm not a big uh, naked guy either. But you gotta be to in order to be walk around naked. You gotta be hot as yeah. Fuck yeah. I mean, you have to have. Because even hot people are insecure with themselves, you know? Yeah. So for you to be, like, confident in your own naked body, you must be a fucking undeniable, like, 10. Uh, But here's my thing. You ever just sit down naked? Disgusting. (laughs) Like, just, like, see what you see? Like, oh, 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 yeah. I mean, that's, that's the definition of, you know, Seinfeld, good naked and bad naked. When you sit. I mean, when I stand up, I do not like my naked body, period. <laughs> when I sit down and this shit bunches up, hangs forward and shadows and lights. Even, like, I mean, even people who just hang around the house shirtless. Like, if you're not in a fraternity, you shouldn't be hanging around shirtless anymore. Yeah, I, you don't, I am, I'm firmly clothes on. You don't have the, you don't have the looks for it. Mm-hmm. But this is not even, this is about, this is jealousy. This girl's friend said, he has a nice ass, and she doesn't like that another girl saw. I don't think this has to do with like naked. But also, I think this has to do with like competitive girl bullshit. But like that's, I, I how old did they have ages in it? No, I don't think I don't think it did. Because that's some like fucking twenty year old bullshit. Like if like if my friend saw my girlfriend naked right now, like, accidentally or like mm-hmm. I'd be like, yeah, like I don't know, you came in the house, made a mistake, it's funny, whatever. Like to get actually jealous, like. How dare someone else see your naked body? Like, yeah, no, I'm with you, but girls get, you know, kind of competitive about that. They get, they get, you know, jealous. They get. I mean, insecure. I think guys are the ones who technically get uh, the jealous ones. You know, we murder over it. Well, we just have the ability to, you know, girls would murder. <laughs> girls would absolutely <laughs> well, murder. Girls can jealousy. murder. Yeah, but it's harder for them. It's harder. You gotta but- like carry out a plot. Guys can just murder in the moment. <laughs> Mo- moment of, of weakness. Crime of passion, boom, you're dead. <laughs> a girl has to like poison you or like wait till you're asleep and like, you know, it's got to be uh, by the by. You, you, so you're officially it was, saying. I mean, you're right. It would be easier for me to murder somebody. But like, I just also think, I think guys t- are historically the more crime of passion guys. Girls might silently, not crime of passion, but just like the anger over someone else seeing like, how dare oh, yeah. that someone saw your body or whatever? Like that's a guy thing. Uh, but okay, yeah, I think uh, no, no, no. I think jealousy is both. It's both sexes. I think girls tend to be more. Um, I don't know. I guess guys get jealous about girls. I think girls get more competitive and jealous with other girls and shit like it that. Maybe more insecurity than jealousy. Yeah. Okay. But I do believe that you're going to see uh, more. Like girls will like plot and scheme and scam and like fuck with you. And guys will just like you know kill you. <laughs> so the the statistics the, the statistics are going to be skewed. Girls are are feeling it too. They're just like, well, all right, I'm you know five foot two and 110 pounds, so I have to like go home and like cyber stalk you and ruin your life digitally or something <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Whereas guys will just be like, yeah, you looked at my girl or you looked at you looked at this other guy, I'm gonna stab you. You're fucking dead. Uh, so you say this guy unequivocally, he is. I just think he's the innocent one, I, I, or he's I, he's guilty. I think he's an asshole. So if it this, is, this is, am I the asshole? Then yes, you are. But it has nothing in this in this situation. You're right. But I just think someone who walks around the house naked is an asshole. This poll, I've never seen this in my entire life on Twitter. Twelve thousand people voted too. So this is like a sizable vote. They did. Uh, they didn't do asshole. So it's a little bit skewed. They did innocent and guilty. They voted that he was innocent. What do you think the numbers were? I have never seen anything like this. Nine nine one. 98-2. Wow. 98-2. No, he is like he's definitely innocent in the situation. No doubt. Like right. his girlfriend, he's walking around his house naked. I just think people who do that are assholes. His girlfriend should let him know all that stuff. But 
I think if I knew you, if I, if I, if I just, I think that's the, per, that's a personality trait of someone who's an asshole. All right. So, I mean, final answer, you're kind of a weirdo and an asshole if you walk around your apartment naked, because it's just like, who the fuck do you think you are? But if you just keep giving keys to random people who gets to walk into your apartment, I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe I'm not naked, but it's also weird if I just have other people who are not my, my girlfriend or roommate walking into my apartment. Right. You're, you're an asshole you're, for doing that. You're an asshole for, for jeopardizing my safety. Yeah. And my, my privacy. Like, maybe I'm not walking around naked, but what if I was jerking off on the couch? Right. You know? <laughs> I had a moment the other day. I think I, did I say this on the podcast? No, I said it on CCK. So I got, I got a Roku, and, you know, I'm adding all these apps. And uh, I was like, you can put Pornhub on here. So I search, and there's no Pornhub. But then I Googled it. I was like, there's got to be. And it's like, you have to go in. It's like a hidden, it's like a hidden app, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And so I downloaded it. I put it on my Roku. Watch the porn on my TV. And then I was like, I got to delete this. Like, if I'm, if you know, someone ever comes over and I'm like, here, you know, but here's the Roku remote. And it's like, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, PH, you know, <laughs> big fucking orange and black. Like, that, the jerk off on the TV is, is too much, too. Where it's, it's, um, I found it was pretty enjoyable. But it's like, <laughs> I just, no, it's not too much, but, but it's just like, I'm used to, how to scroll on phones and laptops. Yeah. I imagine the scrolling experience is a whole new so, one. And, and Roku does this like, it makes this noise and like, and you know, it didn't have my recommended and all these things. <laughs> it was, um, but you know, it was popped up there on like a fucking 65 inch screen. That's a plus. Buddy, it's a fucking 300 inch screen. <laughs> <laughs> The face you just made. You made a face like a big, dumb, special head kid. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and, then, and then sometimes, oh, boy, when it goes to black, then you can, like, there ends up being, like, a dark scene or something like that, and you can just see your own face. Oh, oh that's tough. <laughs> Literally talk about see, like, ah! take a look in the mirror, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. my God almighty. Yeah. Um, as you just did that, by the way, I think, you know, next Tuesday... We're gonna do uh, top five, top five gifts of all time. Gifts, yeah. Okay. Because it made me think. This is, uh, you know, spoiler alert for what one of my picks is gonna be. The dude who's saluting, and it looks <laughs> yeah. like he's jerking off because he's waving the flag. Ah, oh, so fucking funny, so good. I forgot about that one. I mean, that's just that's pure internet serendipity. Mm. All right, voicemail time, and then we'll get into our interviews. Voicemails are brought to you by Manscaped. Are you prepared to unveil that summer bod? I am not, but not for manscaped reasons. It's just my this body's is disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> but like it would be more disgusting if I didn't manscaped. If, if I didn't manscape. And that's where I would imagine most of us are at, you know? How about the fucking Zach Efron shit? Oh, that was some bullshit. Calling Zach, and they had a picture of Zach Efron during Baywatch, which is when he admittedly was like, I was on steroids because I got out of rehab and was like working out too much. Yeah. When he was like, I mean, disgusting. He's like, he's like and was still miserable. Right, he's right. Like, and, and I still hated every second of it. And then there was the after picture was him in a more recent movie or, or his TV show, whatever. Uh, and he's still chiseled. <laughs> he just has some chest hair. Yeah. And they said, look at Zach Efron's dad bod. Is it, it was a tough. Tough headline. I mean, if that's a dad bod, I am like a dead great great grandfather bod that's decomposed. Zach Efron's gonna be a grandfather, and he still won't have a dad bod. No, like Zach Efron's right. never gonna be a person with a dad bod. Zach, that's that, just, he could sire the, the like seventy still, kids. People still use fucking dad, dad bod. bod. I know. Get out of here. That dad bod died with Jason Momoa when they were like, Jason right. Momoa's got a dad bod. That was so no, fucked he up. Guy, you know, start defending the, the honor of the fucking jacked men. The dad bod is Leo. That's like the, if you want to make like yeah, a, yeah. a, like I would still, I would like Leo's body too. But if you're going to talk about a celebrity who it's kind of like, oh wow, he's a little bit, a little bit doughy, it's Leo. Right. Everyone else who has like muscles and abs and shit, you have any <laughs> definition, you're not a dad. You don't have a dad bod. Fuck off. But Efron had a little, little uh, chest hair. He looked great. It was like trimmed. And that's what you could do with the fantastic. manscape. The, the, the lawnmower comes with like the clipper. So you can shave it all the way down. Or you can, uh, you know, I think there's three settings, so you can have the different lengths. The Perfect Package 3.0 has the lawnmower. It has the uh, the ball crop preserver. It has the deodorizer. Uh, they now have the uh, nose and hair trimmer, and they also got the shears kit, which comes with nail clipper, a little baby scissor, a nail file, and a tweezer. Comes in this like black 
black case with a magnetic. I appreciate a good fucking <laughs> manicure kit, okay? <laughs> so I'm in on the shears. Breaking news, uh, they just did it in Canada as well. So you can get your manscaped. A bunch of hairy motherfuckers up in Canada who are now uh, going to be able to trim it down, have a nice smooth body, I'll and look good. that moose body of yours. Oh, God. Could you imagine that? Imagine like a Canadian who's been like, I haven't manscaped in 10 years. <laughs> they come out of their cabin and there's just a fucking pile of hair around them. Um, so Canada, America, whatever, get the crop reviver, the crop preserver, the bo- uh, the boxer briefs, which help your balls stay clean and dry and uh, smelling good. And you can get all of this uh, when you go to manscaped.com, use the promo code KFC, you get 20% off plus free shipping. And if you subscribe, you'll get a, you'll get two free gifts. You get a travel bag, which is worth 40 bucks and the Manscaped uh, boxer briefs, which I talked about. So, Manscaped.com, promo code KFC, sign up for a subscription, get a free bag and a free pair of boxers. That's a fucking deal. Manscaped.com, code KFC. Voicemails, let's do it, Nikki. What up, fellas? So I have a little would you rather. Uh, Would you rather be able to control your dreams every single night so it could be whatever you want, or be able to fall asleep whenever you want and wake up feeling well rested a hundred percent. So like you could go to sleep being hammered, drunk, feeling sick, yada, 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 and wake up feeling completely new or control your dreams. Let me know. Well, one is a practical tool, like a practical thing you could use. One's just like kind of cool. What was the first one? Uh, control your dreams right? or be able to wake up like without a hangover basically is what he said, right, Nick? Uh, control when you go to sleep and when you wake up, you're well rested and like feel good. Oh, if you could give me that control when I fall asleep and when I wake up, I'd be a different person. Okay. Now I agree. And it's wild to me that one of like the major problems, one of, you know, whenever we talk about these things, like why didn't they teach us this? And why didn't they tell us about that? Like letting, letting people know that when you become an adult and it's, it's like an adult adult, I think you gotta be like 30 plus. That sleeping is going to be hard. <laughs> like, what? I did not. I was not prepared for that. And I, I remember being like, who needs Ambien? Like, just close your eyes, go to sleep. You're good to go. And it's like sober sleep. Natural sleep is a thing of the past for your boy. <laughs> and I just want my body to stop. Just stop my fucking wheels from spinning. Just go to sleep, get some rest, and wake up in the morning. And I can't do it. And so then I take, you take, you know, I take Benadryl, I smoke weed, I do melatonin, and then I'm groggy, I'm doing edibles, the whole nine. And then you're a wreck in the morning. So, yeah, to be able to be like, Go to sleep right now. Wake up right now. You always feel good. And like I would do it at like 10 p.m. because I know I'm not doing anything anymore. Like I know mm-hmm. I'm done for the day, but I know I'll also sit there for six more hours yeah. and watch TV. Yeah. So I yeah. used to be like asleep, bam, done. wake up, bam. Because I like last night I had it again where it's just like it's basically a weekly occurrence for me now where I just don't go to bed that night. And basically I pull an all nighter. I fall. I'll take like God, a, that's crazy. I'll take a lot of micro naps. Like there'll be a lot of times where I'll fall asleep for 15 minutes and then we just wake up again like mm-hmm. and then go. But what I did. Last night, because I'll tell you what, would have been pretty nice to have that dream ability here. Because last night I had a fucking dream that was fucking awesome. And you're it, new to the dream world still. It's it still was, only like a year or two old, right? Buddy, this one, me and Tommy Brady went out on his yacht. Oh, and it wow. Was, he was, it was at his house. It was at the, it's not his real house. It was at this house that was built in the middle of Boston. It's this castle in the middle of Boston that Tom Brady owns, and it's on a river. And he has a huge yacht that he keeps outside it. And, like, we went over. We were just drinking, hanging out with Giselle, having a good time. And we went on a yacht ride. And as we – and I thought this was so real. I had my phone in my hand to text my friend being like, hey, you'll never guess what just happened, and to tell him this story about me being on a yacht with Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized, like, mm, you're on the couch, dude. <laughs> um, but – as we're like leaving the Boston Harbor, and then Tom's just kind of sitting there with a drink, and I go, I said, "Look, I know how you're going to answer this question because I know you're a modest guy, but do you ever just look around here and think, man, this is kind of the city that Tommy built?" And he went, "Fuck yeah, I do!" And I said, "Oh, I love you." I mean, that's and an I- entirely real dream. Like, <laughs> that's exactly probably what would happen. That was like so cocky. It was like I was like I I was literally I was like wait no. The office is still playing. <laughs> that's the uh, worst feeling. Yeah. And that's why as, as but valuable. It's still, it's still like that. That was so real in my head. That really happened. So I really did if that. you think about that, I, I think there's an in, in, incredible amount of everyday, real, tangible value to being able to say, go to sleep, wake up, feel rested. If you could control your dreams and you know that going to sleep becomes the best thing 
Like that means every night you go on a vacation. That means every night you go to heaven. That means, and cause, cause I'm assuming you can remember it and you can live it and it's more lucid and you can pick it happening. So every day I'd be like, I'm going home. I'm going to bed <laughs> and I'm going to like hang out with Tom Brady. I'm going <laughs> to fuck this girl. I'm going to go to the moon. I'm going to see aliens. But then that. we'd get into, we'd get into a black mirror, a danger zone. Definitely. Right. Definitely. I would just try to sleep 24 hours a day and control my life and right, like control then you'd my start, dreams. Then because you'd get too you'd get too wrapped up in your dream. World. It would need to be Inception. I need to have a you'd have top. Yeah, and then, but then you'd start taking all that melatonin and then that Benadryl mm-hmm. and those edibles to sleep all day mm-hmm. because you know you've created this whole new world for you. I mean, basically, it's kind of like what happens with like Chinese gamers who die at the desk. Yeah, kind of deal, yeah. Just took so much Red Bull to stay up and play right. like, this simulated world. And also created. the come down of like when you wake up and it's like. Back to the dick sucking factory for another nine <laughs> hours. Like I can't wait till I get back to my dream world where I have like a beautiful wife and a million dollars and all that. So every time you're in your waking life, you'd be depressed. Right. Yeah. That's and a, then you'd that's a, get to the point you'd be eating so much melatonin and sleeping so much that your new dream it wouldn't be sex and money and shit. You'd be like, I just don't want to be groggy. I just don't want to be sleeping. You'd it would, it would, it would, you know like the whole thing would flip around. But I think. In the beginning, the mental health aspect, you never watch Star Trek, right? You're not a fucking loser like me. But <laughs> Star, Star Trek, Trek bro? yeah, bro. Star Trek is. Fire. I mean, I don't know why I asked, like, surprise. Like, Star Trek, the next generation, fire. Is that the one that's with Captain Picard? Picard, Jean Luc Picard. They got something called the Holodeck. Do you watch, like, the new ones, too? No, no, no. no. I heard the new ones are pretty good. Yeah, I, um,. Yeah, I don't know. I just kind of cashed out at. I like the movies, but yeah, that's what I mean. The movies. Oh, oh like, yeah, yeah. Chris okay. Pine and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, those are fire. Yeah, those are great. Okay. Chris, uh, Chris Pine's the fucking man. The most underrated Chris in Hollywood. Fuck you, chicks in the office. I like Chris Evans too, but Chris Pine is that dude. Um, they have a holodeck, and it's like uh, it kind of looks like the green screen room. You walk in, and it's just like four walls, and you like you pick a hologram. You just be like, I want to be on a yacht in the 1700s and shroom, shroom, the computer makes it happen. You just get to like live out a fucking dream. Huh. Fire. See, that doesn't sound great to me. That just sounds like you're sitting in a green room. But you're not. I mean, it turns into like, you know, it's it's like super advanced technology. Okay. okay. And then, but then you can be like, oh shit, it's like three o'clock. I got a meeting like holodeck off and you're just, you're, you know, you're back in, in the green screen room. All that shit, all that shit scares me. All that shit's too dangerous. Well, it's like taking hallucinogenic drugs in a way. I'm, yeah. too, I'm afraid to do that, but it's like if you could control it, you know. But, but, you, but if you can control it, that means you can just do it forever too. Like well, I'd fall, right. I, again, I'd fall in love with that world and just be like, yeah. "Fuck it." Lock yeah, it that back. happens. That's that's part of Star Trek for really? sure. Yeah, uh, but then it's like, who cares? As long as you can fucking do it all the time, <laughs> just throw away all your you responsibilities. Hate, yeah, you hate your real life. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it is tough. Mm-hmm. Better to just make your own life decent, you know. Next up, what up? KFC, Fights, BC, shout out Nick. So, like, I've lived in a bunch of big cities for most of my time in my life, like Boston, Salt Lake, and now I'm stuck in bumfuck Louisiana. Um, It's it's about 100 miles from anything. Salt what, Lake? What the fuck am I supposed to do here? What should I do? What do I do? Seems like there's nothing around. Give me any suggestions. Buddy, I don't know where you are. Yeah, that's like like a girlfriend like getting lost and being like, I need like like I can't find like you need to, you need to help me find the I, place. I'm like, I, I'm like I, I don't know where you are. How can I help you? How about this one? I can't find any parking. The parking's the parking's one we've talked about extensively on this podcast, and it's still. But I, I also, I either. will always admit this: when I'm pulling up to someone's place, I want to call and ask where do I park. I don't because I realize it's a ridiculous well, question. But like when I went to I, your house that night, yeah, and but I drove, no, no, I think that's different than being like. I'm coming to your place. Is there street parking? Do you have a driveway? Is there a garage? Like, you know the area. Give me a heads up. Versus when I get there, let's say I, I you told me there's street parking, and I get there, and there is none. It's all taken up. And then being like, well, what do I do now? Right. Well, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm not in the car, dude. Drive until you find a spot to fit your car. Yeah. That, that drives okay, me that's, crazy. That's true. That's true. Um, but I don't know. Um, for, I just can't believe. I guess Salt Lake is probably a pretty big city, but I can't, you know, lumping that in as, like, we're in the big city. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I thought it was gonna be like Boston, New York, Chicago, like yeah. Boston, Salt Lake, yeah. this is, uh, Louisiana is. Yeah, to me, it's like if you've figured out uh, how to have fun in those places, then you you probably. I mean, ahead Salt of the Lake's game. fucking dope. He, yeah. He, he, the, the, right as soon as he started, he sounded like a kind of a ski bum. So it seems like what he might have done right after college. Right. Um. I mean, it's dope if you do that. I don't think it's 
very dope if you're not doing that. I have, like, yeah. my uncle moved out there. I yeah. have, okay. uh, I've never been, but, like, my uncle loves it out there. I had a few friends who lived out there for college, after college. Is it, like, Tahoe-esque? Is that Tahoe in Utah? Stuff. Did I make that up? Tahoe, Tahoe, no, Tahoe's in California, California and Nevada. Nevada, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, uh, I don't I, when I was Tahoe, it was, like, we had a good time, but we didn't, we were on the, the Nevada side. So that wasn't, I think the casino and stuff is on the California side. Well, that wouldn't make sense because it'd be in Nevada, wouldn't it? Wouldn't make any sense. So maybe sense. I was on the California side. Yeah. I forget, but we weren't over by the casino and stuff like that. But we went to bars and stuff. But it, I wouldn't That's call really it. Neat. Yeah, I wouldn't call <laughs> it like a burgeoning nightlife. I, 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 I don't. I can't speak to this uh, personally because I've never really lived in any like boondocks. Um, but I, th I think I would do you know the same thing we try to do every night, Pinky. I'd go to a bar. Uh, you know what? I, I think the the good, like, tangible advice for this, whether it's like I live in a city that I don't know, I'm out of college and I'm, you know, I'm living on my own for the first time, or I'm in it like a, a lame city. I think go to a bar and befriend the bartender. Yeah, because telling people to just like make friends is like I don't fucking know how to do that. But the bartender is here. He's gonna be here every night. He's paid to kind of like interact with you. And if you can actually become friends with him, he's a local. He might know some people. He'll introduce you to some people at the bar. And maybe all of a sudden you have a little friend group from that bar. Making friends with the, or the not, only or people he, in New York I've made friends with are bartenders. Are bartenders, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's so I was gonna say, even if you don't make new friends, only non you just have friends who are bartenders. Right. Yeah. And they you know, get free it's, drinks. It's, and, it's great. It's all yeah. like we hang out, we have a blast. Or you know what? Even better, like become a bartender. I would if I, I was know. him. I'd become like if I if for whatever reason he has to. Live, I'm gonna guess he's in the military. Like I don't, I don't know why you would go like what 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 could possibly send someone on this Bouncing route around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like what I, what could make you live in the sticks of Louisiana mm -hmm. when you're from Boston? It sounds like, and mm -hmm. then kind of went to Salt Lake for a bit. I I I don't know because then a ski bum doesn't sound like a guy who joins the military. Like you're kind of either. You have concocted two completely fabricated storylines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's either a ski bum or he's like a, a fucking green beret. And um, well, isn't he a green beret? But it's like <laughs> that sounds like a place a fort is at, like a hundred miles from any city yeah. in the middle of Louisiana. Yeah, no, sounds I hear you, like but I mean, that's I, maybe he's just like a, Timothy uh, is. Maybe there's like a branch to my office that's in this fucking. You know, maybe maybe he's none of those things. No, he definitely got be none of those. I'm just trying to put it together here, man. Um, but the just like the people, only people who go from Boston to Salt Lake are usually ski. Yeah, like, yeah And yeah. then, but then I don't know how you get to fucking Louisiana. Louisiana. But I would go full redneck. I I I, I kind of had like one, probably like a three month stretch in Tallahassee where I went redneck. Meaning what? Like the way you dress, the way you act, the way places you go. The uh, like the more the just the, like people I hang out with. And like like uh -huh. I went mudding. Like that was fucking. What, what does that fun, even mean? Man. You just drive fucking trucks oh, in, the, in the mud. That's cool. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like it's a good time doing donuts and shit. Yeah, yeah. like like a, they have like a mud pit set up. Remember like when Hank went gigging? Gigging, yeah, gigging. I wouldn't do. Gigging, gigging is, is just, just stabbing frogs with a pitchfork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that that's considered. And then he something. shot a deer later that trip. Yeah. Boy, I wouldn't go that. Full Henry redneck. became a, a murderer on that trip. I would. I wouldn't go that full redneck. I would go like I'd do, socially redneck. Yeah, yeah, I would do the 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 the, the mudden, and I don't know. I just like hang out like in grass and watch stars and I don't. Know, I guess I'd become a hippie. Really, getting down redneck hippie. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's a nice a sweet spot. Yeah, you're, yeah. I'm a redneck media. Uh, yeah, hippie. there you go, Man. bud. Just fucking get a mullet. But wear like you know, get tattoos and shit, and smoke some weed, but drink some some natty. Yeah, just live that life. I think I think that's a I, if I was forced to live in the woods, I like we've always talked about this. Like I'm a chameleon. I I I would fully embrace it. Just mm -hmm. be like, well, this is where this is what I do now. This is what I do. Oh, you can't can never fail with bartenders too though. It's like just find your local watering hole, belly up there every night, and you're good to go. Hey, KFC. Spice, uh, Nick slash BC, whoever's there. First time, long time, I guess. Um, I'm calling because of KFC's tweet the other day from when the Mets were playing a game, I think against the Yankees, but it could be wrong. And the tweet said, I wonder if the fake noise technician just pushed the away team, just hit a ball to the fucking moon button. Mm -hmm. And fun fact, I am actually the "quote unquote" fake noise technician wow. for another MLB team this season, which is very funny and hard. So, cut us some slack this season. Yeah, but that's it got me thinking: if you could have a button in life that just did something random, 
mm-hmm. either it like did an action or some it said something or whatever, what would it be? And like, for example, I just taught my mom how to mute someone on Facebook. And I always wish I had a mute button for people in real life that you could just see someone and be like, mm-hmm. stop, like, I don't want to. First of all, I, I think the, so this, this was the other day I was watching the Mets Yankees, uh, Clint Frazier put a ball into like the fucking middle of the second deck, just bombed it and you know the the fake crowd noise did like the oh like when the home team's like oh fuck that was a (laughs) moonshot and so i'm thinking like do they just have someone's got to be quick on the draw and be like all right there's the disappointed crowd noise there you know and it worked by the way they did it right timing was good this i would love to be like come on yeah do you have to (laughs) yeah really you have to uh but i'd love to fucking find out more like being that person you just have like a soundboard do you have uh you know, are you like a fucking, you like a conductor? Or are you? I you would know? guess a soundboard, but it's a pretty cool job. It's a, a do... high stress job. Yeah. And I, I mean, like the early going, you know, there's that like, that like buzz that's almost just like crickets noises kind of. And then like in the late innings, it's, it's palpable. I mean, there's a whole, they took it all from MLB, the show. So they have like all the, I'm sure they have all like the labels on it, whatever. That's fascinating. That's, but, that's pretty cool. But like also, like I would, I would fuck it up. I, I, I told a story before when I was like pulled out of the crowd in Little League to like ref third base mm-hmm. or ump third base, mm-hmm. and there was like, did he tag up? I'm like, tag up. <laughs> you just think I was paying attention for a fucking tag up? Like, I don't, I don't know. And they're like, well, you got to make a decision. I'm like, I wasn't looking. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> like, like, I was like arguing with adult men. Like I wasn't looking. You might as well guess Dude, too. Like, you pulled a kid out of the crowd in a Superman T-shirt to tell me to fucking ump third base, and no, I wasn't watching for tag ups. Like, okay, even tagging up at this level, right. Jesus Christ! <laughs> like I was, it's was like getting babysit, babysat by like a girl who's a year older than you. Like I was yeah. slightly older than the children playing. Right. I had no reason to be the umpire for the games either. Um, <laughs> but the like that would happen to me. They'd be like. Where's the button? I'm like, I wasn't looking that time, dude. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, took, it, yeah. I took that play or, off. You know what's going to happen? This is a three and a half hour game. I'm going to zone out <laughs> sometime. Someone's going to push like home team home run when, it, right. you know, and like the crowd's going to be cheering at City for a Yankee f- a home run. It's going to be, well, what the fuck just happened? Uh, a button that could do anything, though. This is a, this is a loaded question. I mean, yeah. I wish I could have a button where I, like, you know, imagine if I could just push a button where you just get. <laughs> Sucked off the planet Earth and uh, there's no repercussions. <laughs> but what about that? What's about what about? Let's just say twice a year. You ever see the movie The Forgotten with uh, Julianne Moore? It's like this weird sci-fi movie where yeah. like people disappear and then she knows it. She's like, "Where's my son?" But everyone else is like, "What are you talking about? You never had a son." But it's because they just got like yoinked away. And there was this scene or this thing like just 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 pulls them off the planet. Now, twice a year, I'd like to be able to push a button, and you just get. Like, oh, it's like, happening to someone else. Yeah, like, oh, I thought it was happening to you. I was like, "What are you?" No, like, are you like, like when you put a mail, you know those mail tubes. Oh yeah, and you just get. I don't know where you go, and there's no repercussions for me, and then people know it too. So it's like, don't fuck with me, <laughs> or I'll send you to orbit. But then people would also know when I've used my two times. Yeah, yeah. Once you they're, they're just like, gonna beat me up and fuck with me, you know. <laughs> so yeah, how about that? Eradicate two people from the place from the planet Earth. You would get masked. Fucking ass kicked nonstop. The people just roll up to you in masks and just beat the shit out of you once you use your second. Oh yeah, like definitely. that would be definitely like like just especially like if I'm, if I'm holding it over your head, like oh yeah yeah you gonna be a little bitch I'm gonna fucking send you and then the day you find out that I'm out of buttons, day in oh. day out fucking soap party until <laughs> New Year's Eve. <laughs> and but then, I mean, I would I would have to keep my one in my back pocket. You know what I mean. Yeah, you really just have to. So I, you I, always I, have to have one. Yeah, right? I'd pick one. But then person. even then, like, what if you're getting group beat up? And then, but one, I'd be like, it's one of you, motherfuckers. Yeah, but then once he's gone, it, it's none of you, motherfuckers. Yeah, but would you start the fight with me? I'm like, it might be you. <laughs> it might be you. If it I had a big enough group, yeah. You think? I you're am. willing to risk that? Yeah, I guess probably not. Yeah. So it's just like. Like everyone's got their guns ready. To I, shoot, I don't think you last trigger. five years with the with this power. Like I would get killed. Yeah. I mean, someone well, I mean, you could also far. shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, let's say there's some sort of uh, you know protective shield around. Right, you. right. <laughs> I was going to say just something. Give me a boner. Yeah. <laughs> so much better. That's another thing they don't tell you. It's going to be hard to get your dick hard. <laughs> just like 
Some nights I'm just like, I don't feel like it. Boner. Yeah. Like, I don't know if just sneaky in the conversation. Yeah. It's, it's not- like some nights I just want to jerk off, too. Like, right. Eh, I don't want to fucking. I don't want to build up. Play I want to helicopter myself. it. Yeah. yeah. Done. And when you're sitting there whapping it against your stomach, <laughs> trying to get, you know, I don't want to do that. It's not that, like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and say you hit 30 or whatever, you get older and you have like full blown ED, but it's something. I remember being like, as a kid, not a kid, but like, you know, 20 something, being like, I will never. Not be able to get my dick on. Actually, like you know, I am a goddamn pervert. This thing is ready to go at all times. And then you know you have a couple nights where it doesn't work, and you're like, "Well, I did. I wasn't told. I thought you either have a functioning dick or you're like an old man and it's broken. I didn't know well, it was I just going to be troublesome nights. I think my. I think I am an old man and it's broken. And but really, not in, not in that sense. I think just my penis itself is an old man. <laughs> not, 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 and he just doesn't understand what's happening most of the time. Like like. I'll just be sitting here. I'll just go off. I'll be full hard. <laughs> like, middle of this podcast. I'm just like, like I'm hard <laughs> right now? But there'll be times like, I'm and just And then you on, go home and it's not hard. And you're like, Jesus, I'm you just don't couch. know what's going on, dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. just sit on the couch. Like, I'll, be, I'll be thinking about absolutely nothing. And I'll, and I'll roll over. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck, man? Why are you hard right now? Like, I, I wasn't even remotely horny. So I just want, I want to be able to control like a drawbridge. Like, I want to be able to put it down sometimes. Yeah. Just leave me alone, yeah. dude. Not yeah. right now. Yeah, that's go a great to, point. Go to bed. It's not It's not a, a boner-inducing button. It's just a dick control button. Because dick putting control. it down is just as important as putting it up. Oh, it, it happened like four times. What, what do you think is going on with your body when you get hard and you're not... When you have a random boner, what do you think? Your, your body just got confused for a second or what? I guess... Like, is your brain being like, all right, we got to send body... We got to send blunt to, like, you know, the feet. And then it's just like, oh, we, we got our signals crossed and we sent it to the dick. <laughs> yeah, like, whoops, wrong way. Like, <laughs> yeah. this highway was Detour, closed. Yeah. I had to take a new route and next thing I knew it was in the tip of your dick. It, it, dude, like, yesterday was a legitimate problem. Like, yesterday... And, and then guess what? Then I started being like, well, fine, you want to do it? I'll teach you a lesson. And then, like, I just fucking kept jerking off. Yesterday was a problem. <laughs> How many times are we talking? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. I wouldn't. Are you doing uh, more than five? Double digits. No! Because <laughs> it just kept going off. I didn't know what to do. You Did you come double digit times? Yeah. To fruition every time. Every time. You are. It might have been. It might have been 14 to 16. <laughs> Did it hurt afterwards? No, no, no. How long is each session? I mean, some are just medical. Others how how are... about when you're like in your 12th, 13th? Is it like, yeah, you, know, you got to work it? No. no. It's always pretty easy. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's really not about getting it up. It's about telling like, you to get down. Down, down boy. Hey, man. Wow. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'm drunk on the night where it's like, yeah, this is a hard time. But 14 it's, times. It's more like you got to get your act together, buddy. You I gotta, just, I gotta, you gotta gotta start acting like an adult. Right. right? Grow up. Like fucking. Grow up. Grow down. Understand the surroundings. Understand what's happening today. Today I'm doing a lazy day on the couch and you just fucking, like a dog yipping. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, 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 hey. Lazy. Hey, hey. Shut up, dude. <laughs> Part of my lazy plans is not fucking. furious uh, aerobic <laughs> exercise, okay? I had a kid call uh, radio today and asked, uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of the 6, 8, 12, 14, cha- 24 challenge. You know, here's where I'm at with each thing. What should I do? And I was like, you got to just start running more miles because you're not going to be able to jerk off that many times unless you're fucking Oh, I could bird. knock out 24. He told me his PR was 10. And I was like, all right. I mean, if you say so, I don't believe people, but I believe you. Yeah, buddy. It might, it might be, it might have been twenty. I, I just lost count. I was in like a just like, like a cum drunk haze. Okay. <laughs> Last voicemail. Moving on. Fuck off. A cum drunk haze. <laughs> yeah, it was a punch drunk haze. Like I was just like, yeah. I, I, it was just a fog of war. <laughs> cum drunk haze sounds like something. It's not like that- I've been drinking cum. I'm <laughs> shooting it. <laughs> That sounds like something like uh, like Cytheria is in a cum drunk haze, which is fucking. You're a dirty porn star. Yeah. One mm. more, and we'll let the we'll get into our interviews. <laughs> Shit. That you know what? You, no, we're not even gonna do another fucking voicemail. I, I don't want Feidelberg talking about cum drunk anymore. So we're gonna get right into our interviews. Uh, we got two very funny comedians. We'll start off with uh, Rosebud Baker, who uh, we is our first guest at Barstool Sports, back in the building, live in the flesh. Thank God, because it just feels so much better to do it in person. And Rosebud had me fucking rolling. Dying. Rosebud had me like head back, cackling to the (laughs) ceiling type laughing. 
talking about her pussy and her fucking <laughs> diva cup. I mean, it's a wild one, folks. It's a, it's a, it was one of the better interviews in a while, and I, I think that part of that is due to the fact that we're just in person now. Yeah, but it's part of it is due to the Rosebud. Part just of it, letting yes. it fly. Yeah. <laughs> Brought to you by Cross Rope. Uh, Feidelberg is looking jacked oh. these days, and it's obnoxious. It's rude is really what it is, leaving me in the dust as, like, the fucking doughy, ugly one. Uh, but it's all because he committed that, that, to Cross Rope. I got lucky with a video this weekend. It was just like, yeah, angles, uh, shut angles up. Work. Shut up. Like shut that. up. <laughs> shut the fuck up it's like Efron ah, this is a bad angle and, uh, you're fine you're, fuck you uh, but it's all because you committed to cross rope early in the quarantine uh, cross rope is the best way to mix up some aerobic exercise with jumping rope with body weight uh, work and you're going to exercise your entire body while getting your heart pumping and you're going to do it in a fun way where you're jumping rope. You feel like you're on the playground. They got uh, jump ropes of all different weights and different uh, thickness. So, you know, you can jump a regular rope. You can jump a weighted rope. Uh, it has uh, full body weight, uh, body workout programs where, um, you know, you're going to work out. You're, you're going to be doing your jump ropes, but you're also going to be doing your core, your back, your shoulders, your arms, your glutes, uh, as well as getting the heart and the lungs pumping. So it's a full top to bottom strength and cardio workout. And uh, it's efficient. It's easy. It only takes a few minutes. It's fun. It's different. You can do it to get lean. You can do it to get strong. They've got the app uh, that helps track your progress and uh, tells you uh, what what's what's next for your workout, what you're doing, and where you're going. All right now, they have a 60 day risk free guarantee. Uh, when you go to crossrope.com slash KFC. If you get, uh, you can get $40 off the crossrope set plus free shipping when you go to crossrope.com slash KFC. Get that new cardio and full body home workout with the $40 discount plus free shipping when you go to crossrope.com slash KFC. We got Rosebud Baker here, our first guest live back in the flesh. Everyone agreed to it. It's all good. Everything's fine. <laughs> this is consensual. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, w- funny enough, I had like I started following you on Instagram, mm. and I saw a uh, I don't remember at this point. This was like months ago, but I saw like a video you put up, and it was a funny bit. And then I met him at the bar, and he had just been in Chicago, uh-huh. and he was like, "Oh, we saw the funniest comedian," and he starts like. Is that where I met you? Did I meet you? No, there? we didn't meet. Oh, okay. But I just just yeah. saw you there. Right. But he started to like describe the joke and the bit, and I was like, I just like I just watched it on Instagram. We realized we were talking about the same person. Yeah. And I reached out to you. That was months ago. So now it's finally happening. So uh, I was at the show where in Chicago. And this is probably more of a regular scene for you. Yeah, where yeah. like a girl went crazy in the back. Yes, and, oh, that's uh, what it was. That was the clip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was so fun. That, I was sitting li- like literally. Two seats away, and I was like, "This is awful." (laughs) (laughs) I I, I hope they don't think I'm with her. This is sucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I love it when shit like that happens. (laughs) The uh, polar opposite. Yeah. Like, like I can't imagine. I I, I feel like you want to shut down and die. I get, I get, I get. When people make public scenes, I get very awkward. It doesn't, doesn't. And you're just relishing it. It's my favorite thing that could happen during a comedy show. Well, especially when you're up on stage like nine nights a week, right? You guys do a million shows, and like, so this is gonna be something different. Yeah, right. and also it's kind of like how I came up. Like it was like I did that club. Um, I don't even know if I, there's no way it survives the pandemic. If it does, it truly is a Ponzi scheme or something. <laughs> like I don't know what the fuck's going on over there, but it's LOL Comedy Club. I will call them out by name. <laughs> um, they like they basically use these like new comics to do time, and and it's great as a new comic because you like need the stage time. But I would do like three or four shows a night there, and. Every, you know, they're barking people in and telling them that Kevin Hart's going to be on stage. And then, like, I walk out and they're getting charged $8 for tap water in a solo cup. And I'm sitting there. And, you know, and then so you're going against that kind of audience where they're like, you are criminals. Like, they hate you from the second you get on stage. I don't care about you're a good or bad comedian. You're a bad person. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I would have to, I would do so badly there that I would go home and check the Yelp reviews for the site to assure myself it wasn't my fault. Like, it was, it was that bad. So when people come to comedy shows, and and I don't encourage the behavior, but when it happens, like, naturally like that, where somebody just got so drunk and they're just having a horrible week Mm -hmm. and they fucking snap at me. 
I'm like, oh, let's do it. Let's go. You want to play? Yeah. Let's fucking go. It's my favorite I've thing. been waiting for this for months. This hasn't happened in a while, yeah, babe. Like, I I'm cut my go. teeth on bitches yeah, like yeah, you. Yeah. Like, let's go. I can do this. Um, See, I would be like, why are you yelling at me, man? Like, <laughs> like, 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 I know you're not mad at me. Stop taking it out on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, though. The, it really, they aren't mad at you. So, right. and they're ruining your show. So, like, you have, you're already you're at a higher position right, than yeah. they are. Yeah, position and, of power. Only. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. she was like babbling. She wasn't yeah, it even was nonsense. speaking. Yeah. She was like, like Joe Biden. It like, was, I, I think, was like, her <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> I think it was her, her and her boyfriend got in a fight about something and then they could just, yeah. they couldn't get the lid on that one. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it kept going and going. Yeah, no, and also I've been in relationships like that so I kind of get it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> was my heart you goes girl. out to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I I'm I'm actually furious with you. Why? Uh, you posted two things on the internet, <laughs> which have just ruined me. <laughs> Yesterday, that video of those protesters, I think protesters or whatever, singing uh, like the lullaby. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the creepiest fucking <laughs> thing was. I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. What were they chanting? What were they singing? Yeah, they were singing. Um, uh, hands up, please don't shoot yeah, me. me. <laughs> it was like some Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street. I was like, what are their kids going to think of this song? <laughs> Terrifying. That was my first but, thought was like, oh, these poor kids. Like, <laughs> I, If you had an abortion in 2020, you made the right choice because <laughs> the lullabies they're singing to children these days. You just can't come back from that. <laughs> You're done. That's it. I, I, so Nick, our producer, sent it in like our group text, like being like, hey, Rosebud just posted this. And I went along with the bit where I'm like, oh, it's just so creepy. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right. Like, it's like, clever. It's, it's, it's a catchy tune. Like, I could, I could see myself like, Hands up, please don't shoot. Ooh, that's that was what I was thinking. Is I was like, there's no, there's no way they're gonna go home to their kids and not sing this version. <laughs> yeah. Because it's too catchy. Yeah. yeah. It's, Sick pump. Okay. All right. So we're on the same page here. Yeah. That shit sure scared page. me. Yeah. That was that was giving me nightmares that night. <laughs> that was terrifying, but catchy. Yeah. Yeah. It and could be both. <laughs> and then the the main thing, it was it was supposed to be last week when you were supposed to come in. Yeah. Sorry about that, by the way. <laughs> the, the Diva Cup. The oh, Diva God. Cup has, it's before and after for me. Like, yeah. that's a, that was a seminal moment in my life where I, like, I can't, I didn't know about that. We've been going through well, some things here on the podcast where we're learning about the female anatomy, things that we didn't know. Yeah. And I, and yeah. I, and I said about, I said, I usually think I know what's going on. A Diva Cup. <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck that well, was. Well, neither the fuck did I. <laughs> I got my diva cup stuck inside myself last week. And it was um it was my first time using a diva cup. I I never would have done this. And I was talking to my friend and I was like, how the fuck are you putting a bucket up your pussy every week? And and then like, and she was like, You gotta try it, it's good for the environment. You got a, you got a weak stomach. <laughs> I was like, it was, this is gonna make you puke. Yeah. You might need to like take a lap. Um I was I was like, yeah, how are you doing this? Here, <laughs> Go to the box. Yeah, you're gonna need to um, get him a bucket or something. Get him a diva Sorry cup. If that's yeah. triggering. I don't he's gonna take Our Nick is literally getting a garbage can right now. Absolutely I, do it again. Because here's the deal, right before he came in, Kevin like warned me about this because he knows. If I can I make have. the bar stool guys puke, <laughs> I just want you guys to know that is my goal. Oh, yeah. oh, well, it's gonna well, happen. It's pretty easy. Yeah. yeah, I have a, I have a. It's, yeah, it's a, so Kevin amazing. was like, Kevin's like, just you know, like you know what a diva cup is, right? And I was like, yeah, I do actually yeah. do know. So, somehow, <laughs> by the grace of God, I, I happen had to no know what clue. It is. Yeah. Um, but I don't know where the story is gonna go. It's, so okay. it's just. So I, I basically, I, I got it in there, and it was, it was fine. Everything's fine. And wait, I'm let like, me just say, because there's plenty of guys I know who are gonna be like me. It's like a rubber bucket. Cup thing, like you said, it's a rubber that bucket you cup. put in there to collect the blood rather yeah. than to absorb it up. It's but. just a rubber pussy bucket cup, <laughs> and you. Yeah, I don't know why they call it diva cup. They should call it the rubber. The pussy rubber pussy, pussy bucket, bucket cup, cup is such a better name. Um, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it was my my rubber pussy bucket cup is bothering me today. Um, R P B C. Yeah, so <laughs> so I get it up there and it's fine and. Um, and I was using it all week, and I was like, so far, so good. I mean, it's gross. That, that also threw me for a loop. I mean, I watched instructional videos and everything. Yeah. The reusing, and I get that's the point, but I thought it was just... 
the thought of like cleaning that off and then just putting that's it away and putting it back in later is fucking that's nuts. That's what grossed me out. Yeah. Because I was like, that's so, that's so fucking gross. I can't do that. Um, but what it is is that you leave it in all day. So you don't have to like take it out and then clean. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not like a yeah. tampon where you're constantly making like maintenance trips. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I can get behind this. Also, I'm home all day. So what's yeah. going to happen? If there's a bloodbath, I'll figure it out. <laughs> so I, <laughs> but fucking then. Dexter over here. <laughs> but then I fucking slept with it in. And I don't know what my pussy does while I'm sleeping, <laughs> but apparently it clenches. And I, I guess I sleep with a clenched pussy. And. <laughs> That's something that I'm happy to know about myself. Um, Cause you know, it'll deter rapists. Yeah, I was gonna say, that sounds like an evolutionary thing. Right. right. Like, I'm like- Close for business, bro. Yeah. And we're like, we gotta, yeah. we gotta fix this. I guess, I guess I just, you know, I clench up and, I, and I'm and i like, anybody that tries to get in is gonna be locked out. But um, anyone that's in there is also getting trapped in. Yeah, so. apparently, so I wake up the next morning and there's no like string to pull this fucking thing out. You just kind of have to fish hook yourself. <laughs> and I, it's like when you get a condom stuck up there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, except like a condom, you know, it's long enough that you can kind of get this thing traveled. It like went up into me and it suctioned to the wrong part of me. Oh like God. I don't know what part it suctioned onto, but it was like th there's like a vasovagal reaction where like if you uh if it suctions on too hard, you can faint while you're trying to get it out. Jesus Holy shit. So, Being a girl is a fucking catastrophe. So it really was a nightmare. And I'm like, and I wake up, and this is the first thing that, this is also a day that I had slept walk for the first time. Oh. I sleepwalked into the kitchen. I don't know how to say that in the right yeah, context. Yeah, it's tough. But I walked Same into the kitchen. Same thing as blow dry. Did you, yeah. did you blow dry or did you blow dry it? Exactly. I don't. I don't know. Um, but I. I did that, and I walked in the kitchen, and I. I said to my fiance, "I thought you slept on the inside," and he was like, "What?" And I was like, "I thought you slept on the inside." It was really important to me. Um, he was like, "I don't know what you're talking about." I wake up on the toilet. Like I wake up. I'm. He said I walked into the bathroom, and I wake up on the toilet trying to get my diva cup out. And I'm, and I'm just, and I, I can't get it out. And I'm, I just start screaming. Apparently, he he said I just, I just oh go, ah! like I was like, ah! <laughs> and um, oh my God. I was like, I can't get my diva cup out. And he, I was like, I need you to get it out. And um, oh man. So he, he comes in. That's love. Did he get up in there? He comes in, and apparently I was, like, standing with one foot up on the on the sink like I was at the fucking, I was, like, ready to go. Like, I was like, get your headlamp. You know what I mean? And he, he fucking, he comes in, and he's, like, he's trying to get it out. First oh, thing he wow. does, push it further up. Yeah, of course. And I'm like, Oh, I, I just, I'm just screeching and punching the wall behind me. Just like, get it out! So, and I, he's like, he just runs. He decided to just run out of the bathroom. Like, he was like, get me the fuck out of here. I'm, he's just gonna kill me. Like, like a 16 year old in World War II being yeah. like, seeing a battle. He's like, right. like, fuck that he's like but forget it. I'm, he's a turncoat. He just like goes home. And, um, and I, uh, so I FaceTimed my friend, uh, Makala, who was like on the toilet, taking a shit hungover. Oh, God. And, and I face she's like, I can't talk to you right now. She's, <laughs> she's disgusting. What a duo. I'm disgusting. Holy Christ. I was like, I can't get this fucking thing out. <laughs> and, and she goes, she goes, just fucking, she's the one who told me to use it. Yeah. She's like, just push, just breathe and push. <laughs> So I'm, you gotta deliver this. You I just had birth to your diva cup. my diva diva cup out of my pussy. I gave birth to my diva cup, and that was the first five minutes of my day. Like, I was like, where do I go from here? That actually makes me think of like uh, like Frank Sinatra though, where Frank Sinatra's like, I feel bad if people don't drink because when they wake up, it's at the but it's the best they'll feel all day. Like, yeah. I feel bad for people who don't get their Divas cup stuck in them because, like, the day only goes up. Honestly, there. it was a great it can day. It only get better for here. <laughs> it was a great day. You could day go after outside that. and get hit by a car, <laughs> and it still was up for my first five minutes. That's kind of the beauty of, like, being a podcaster <laughs> and being a comic is you're like, if the worst shit that happened to me that day, 
I'm like, that's going in the uh -huh. fucking books. Yeah. Like, that just I'm made like, my job easier. Yeah. Exactly. I don't have to like struggle for shit to talk about. <laughs> I have a perspective. I know what the fuck happened. And um, and I can yell about it. Yeah. Like that was it. That was all I needed. <laughs> that, is, that was a fucking... Tenor. I can just picture being your fiance and being like... Look, I don't know what she was just talking about there, but <laughs> I guess she needs help in the bathroom. And like, you're just knuckle deep trying to fish, fish out a blood, a chum bucket. I know. <laughs> and, by, like, and, and also, by the way, when that comes out, like if he were to succeed, yeah. wouldn't it have been a, you know, a bad, like a murder scene? It, it is. It's bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a good thing. When you when it happens, um, I don't know how, but like when you finally get it out, it just spills into the toilet immediately. So you're like. But part of me kind of wants to look at it. Like, yeah. Part of me is just experiment. like, how much did I? Because there's yeah. measurements on the cup in case you need to know Why how do you much. Need to know that? I don't know. You want to know how much blood you lost. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. There's like parts of it. I'm, I'm, I'm picturing like in Double Dare when they used to have those buckets with the line. You know what yeah. I mean? You got to fill it up. It's like it's if it exactly passes this like line. That. Yeah. It is exactly like that. It's just like Double Dare. Um, I was thinking more Carrie, but yeah. like any, just, any just a massacre scene. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I wonder uh. if the people that created Diva Cup were watching Double Dare one day, <laughs> thinking about how OCD that guy is, and going, you know what would really piss him off is just like making a blood cup that is based off of his invention, you know. But it's it is gross, um, and I I. Can't say I'll be using it again. That was yeah, I was gonna say divacup.com promo code KFC. What a what a fucking endorsement that was. I know, like, ladies. If you want your day to be ruined, <laughs> potentially your life and your relationship to be ruined, get a diva. Cup. It was fucking wild. I I'm so glad my fiance is like. Um, luckily, he was like raised by women and gay men, so he's, he's just not like grossed out by it or freaking out over it. Yeah, he's kind of, he's like a Seattle hippie kid that yeah. grew up in, in the mountains and talking about, like he knew, um, when I met his his niece, she showed me positions that you can give birth in. And she's four. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, all right, well this is a different kind of family. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is what I'm getting into, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she's got her two moms and she's just like showing me how to do Lamaze. <laughs> Um, on all fours. Well, like, just in case you ever, it? Yeah, in case you ever get a diva cup stuck. <laughs> Honestly, I thought about it. I was like, I could use, yeah, the, the four-year-old showed me how to do this. <laughs> well, and then after the, the, the funniest bit, I think, of that whole fiasco, at least on the Instagram clip, she's talking about how it got stuck in there. And she's like, I guess I have like a small pussy. And he was like, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, what do you, what, like, what do you think about the size of my pussy? And he said something like, it's, and he, he hesitated goes, and he started. He was like, it's, it's, it's good. It's he good said it's good. <laughs> I just go, fuck you. I, I, I have a good sized pussy. That's not what I want to hear. Yeah, fuck was, you. I was like, that's the worst thing you can say. And also the pause. <laughs> the, he stuttered, stammered. The he pause didn't know what and to the say. stammer. I was just like, oh, fuck off. I was like, we're not getting married anymore. I, I literally, when he. Good sized pussy. A good, and then well, he goes, but you know what? Oh that's... my God. And then he goes, you're no saint. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, this motherfucker. But I'll tell you what, that's something that, like, that pause and not getting the word you want, I mean, like, that's somewhere I've oh, been. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've never done it about pussy size, but I've definitely yeah. been like, I don't know what to say. Oh, no, I mean, like, that's why I've, I've been on the receiving end of it, oh. where it's like, like, it's... It's perfect for me. Yeah. I'm like, All right. yeah. <laughs> you just want to be like, just right. I know what that means, dude. I know. You just want to be like, okay, go fuck yourself. Yeah. You just start trashing their genitals. Like, like I immediately just started just just crushing him for being uncircumcised and just be, just be like, fuck you. You think I like sucking an uncircumcised dick? I get in there. I'm a fucking champ. You know what I mean? Me and my good sized pussy. <laughs> yeah. We do what we gotta yeah. do. I'm like, listen, I'm the best you can do. <laughs> All right? <laughs> like, we're both in our 30s. Let's not lie to ourselves here. We made some compromises. <laughs> this is the definition of settling. It's yeah. fine. Whatever. Yeah. Now, is he a comic too? He is. He is. Yeah. Oh. We have a how, podcast. How does too. that work? I, that's why I, I figured when you used to explain it on the podcast, yeah. I thought maybe it was just a, a pandemic type thing. Yeah, no. Well, it was. I mean, we started it in on the third day of quarantine. Quarantine, and then we 
got engaged by the third episode. Oh, oh yeah. really? So we right. were like, yeah, that, yeah. That was cute. That, that was a yeah. It was a nice little quarantine engagement where it wasn't a whole fucking yeah, production. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, it was nice. It was, it was fun. I feel like couple comic couples mm-hmm. are. It's got to be Disgusting. a precarious. <laughs> yeah. It just seems like something I can't imagine working, but I feel like I know a handful of them now, so maybe it is a thing. But I feel like com- you guys are all fucking crazy. Comics yeah. are fucking. Nuts. Are you? Would you then, say you're meaner to each other, but like in a playful sense? Yeah. Than other couples. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like we'll and I be- think that's why it works because it's like yeah, it has like maybe. a. I would love to do that in, in front of my other friends. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're going to roast each other and make everyone uncomfortable because we're <laughs> the comics. You know? Yeah, and it happens anyway. Like, mm-hmm. we'll be at dinner with, like, a friend, like, like, two friends that aren't comics, and there's moments when it just gets awkward. Mm. But they think we're fighting. Right. But it's we're just... We're going to talk. Bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, we are fighting. Like, what we're saying well, is I mean, the truth, yeah, no, we're, but we're laughing. I, I absolutely I mean him. everything yeah. we're saying. Okay. Um, he does seem like a lesbian, uh, <laughs> to be clear. But we're, but like, we, <laughs> but we love each other, so it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's like, I wouldn't say that shit, and it wouldn't mm. be funny to us if it, if we didn't know that we loved each other. Right. So right. it works. Um, and also, like, it's a special kind of crazy because we're not, we're, we're both comics, but we're also two sober alcoholics, which is like mm. another level of insane where <laughs> we, you know, we move faster than lesbians do in terms of like commitment. And like we were dating for like five months and we like, got married. Good. It works. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we're uh, we're just like we started a podcast. We're, it's too much. OK, like and we'll both readily admit that. But yeah. it feels like. I don't know. I don't know how it could work for me with somebody else. Like, mm. I, I mean, I've, uh, he's right. I'm no saint. I've fucking <laughs> tried a lot of different things. <laughs> and, um, and she looks to the camera like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a look away, like, hope for not a follow up. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, I'm, I'm like, going to stare over here and no, they won't say, no go on. <laughs> questions on that. And, um, <laughs> but we, but it, he's like, he's great for me. He's yeah. like, uh, it just works. I'm like, when we started dating, I was like, oh shit, this is the guy. Yeah, you this know? is the guy. Fuck, oh, I found the one. Fuck, I, this is yeah. it. This yeah. someone I actually yeah. like. Yeah. And I was bitch. disappointed. <laughs> I was, I, I wished for someone else. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I thought it would have been someone else. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was hoping for like a hot black guy, but it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, Andy. He, I'll he's, take the uncircumcised lesbian, whatever. Yeah. You know, close he, enough. <laughs> <laughs> the uncircumcised lesbian. <laughs> Please, no one call him that. So, <laughs> I'm so scared now. He's gonna fucking hate me. He's yeah, gonna come on I this podcast. Said that. That's like you can say that. I can't say that. He really. He will. He'll lose it. He'll be like, "Go oh, fuck yourself." Now people are calling me the uncircumcised lesbian. When we were looking for, and it's funny because I'm one to talk. Like I absolutely seem like I'm gay. Like when people meet, like my voice, everything about me is like a, um, like I just like I say it in my act, but I'm like a seasoned lesbian. Like I just have this like hardware store voice and vibe, and um, and. So when we walked down the street together, I, I was saying to him when we started dating, I was like, we just seem like two people that are denying our sexuality together <laughs> until we die. Like, you know what? That, that might work that, too, that, though. That, I'll tell you what. That's for, love. That's for romance. For centuries, those kind of couples lasted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll be honest. I mean, and it works for them. They've got they got a secret to keep together. <laughs> right. Commonality, I, yep. I'm like, maybe that's what makes it work for like political couples. Is right. they're, they're almost like gay couples in like the 50s where they just like, they had to keep it a secret. So, yeah, yeah. you know, they that bonded them. Yeah. And, you know, for senators and shit, I'm like, yeah. yeah. If your husband fucks kids, I, I guess you'd <laughs> like, you're like secret to listen, I, I can stay in this and keep this under wraps and be rich for the rest of my life. Or, okay, okay. you know, I feel like I made it dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we all knew what you were talking about. We were all like, yeah, it's definitely pedophiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We're not talking about like, oh, like uh, fucking hookers. Like, no one cares about that anymore. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's kids. Hookers yeah. are fucking kindergarten. <laughs> that's that's angel behavior. That's yeah. like, we hope you're fucking hookers. Get yeah. it out on them and yeah. not nobody else. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I guess calling it kindergarten shit isn't really doesn't really work anymore, <laughs> considering they're doing the, kindergarten the, the, shit. The kindergarten shit's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the uh, we were saying earlier, like, wait, what stage are you at with the pandemic? Like, mm. like, okay, so here's I'm just gonna just, uh, do you still wash your hands? Yeah, you do. But I she do. also is a female. 
I do still wash my hands, um, but I always wash my hands. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. See, so I've we, always. We I didn't. And then we did, and now I, we don't. I again. did. I committed yeah. to like, like we committed to flatten the curve. We locked it down. Yeah. And then it's just, it's such an extra thing for a guy to do it. Have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Like, it, like I just, that I don't even touch anything. Is, yeah. I don't touch yeah, anything. So, yeah. I'm not doing. it. I am a big hand sanitizer. In fact. By the way, I don't know if you noticed when I came in the room, my hand was a little wet. I had washed it. Yeah, I yeah, washed yeah. for guests. Yeah. But if I'm what a gonna, hero. If I'm yeah. gonna go yeah. back and around, and you do deserve the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> <for that. laughs> I don't. I don't wash my hands as like it never really. The pandemic never really had an impact on that. I always wash my hands. I probably washed oh. them longer. I'm probably back to the amount that I washed them before. The yeah, that whole you know happy birthday thing where they tell oh. you to sing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that feels like an eternity. When yeah. when this started, it was almost my girlfriend's birthday, uh -huh. so I'd always sing happy birthday to her yeah. in my head. <laughs> yeah. And now it's all I do. Like it's driven me mad. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's like it's just nonstop all every day. Like that well, is... it's a crazy person song. It's like a song you kill yourself. Right. With. <laughs> but I feel like one thing that did hit me the other day is I was like, it's mm. nuts to me that there was like a full month where women wouldn't touch their faces to put makeup on. Like we were like we were like watching tutorials about how to do your oh, makeup really? so that you wouldn't touch your face. And how it, could you do that? Yeah. Like, like people were like put like, it all on a shotgun? And yeah, then... it was like watching like doing it with a selfie stick or something. Mm. I was like, how the fuck? Why are you trying to keep your hands that far away from We were all crazy yeah. for a while because but we didn't know. Were you even uh I mean, not much of a reason to put on the makeup. I no? did I wasn't putting on I honestly yeah. this is the last two days I've had meetings and like coming here were the only times I've put on makeup. And I mm. honestly looked in the mirror sure. and was like, oh my God, you're so pretty. <laughs> like, I, I'm not I an forgot. ugly person anymore. Every time I look in the mirror the last two months, I'm like, that's my granddad. <laughs> like, I look gross. It's weird. I feel like I'm not a woman mm. anymore. I feel like every woman that is listening to me understands that yeah. you just become a man <laughs> after a certain period of time alone. You yeah, is it great? Man. Yeah. Did you like it? It's great. It's, it's uh, very it's so yeah, relaxing. Easy. It's it's very liberating. Yeah. Yeah, and um, but there's parts of being a woman that are fun. You know, like you get to feel pretty and you get to feel like you're like powerful, which is it's only fun because it's uh it's not real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you're just like, oh, I'm powerful today. Um, and men are like, okay, yeah, well, you're powerful. Um, <laughs> Stop talking. Sit down. <laughs> you're still taking less money. Uh, we're not paying you. But it's um it is like to to feel like a woman is like a cool thing. And I, you just forget it and you kind of miss it after a little while, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, the only way I can compare it is like for guys. Like, you know when you're in a relationship for a long time and then all of a sudden you're like, am I even hot anymore? Like, do you just want a woman to hit on you? Yeah, yeah like yeah. still got it. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's what it feels like. Okay. You, you, okay, I but get it's that. just for ourselves. <laughs> that's what's crazy about girls, though. You're always doing shit for yourselves. Yeah. You know, it's always, or for each other, for other girls. That's yeah. nuts to me. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. I mean... I think we do it for men more than like we want to admit because it doesn't. Yeah, like when, when it doesn't girls feel are like, as good I, when we say that we do. Yeah, it for that's men. what I think. When yeah. when it's like, oh, I, I I'm not dressing up for the guys. I'm dressing up for other girls. I'm like, oh, yeah. That's, but like that's like true. my girlfriend did that where it, like in quarantine, I we we probably like locked down. We didn't see each other for like two months, and she's like. I'm nervous. This is gonna be the first time you ever seen me without eyelashes. And I saw her and I was like, I can't tell the difference. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, I mean yeah, like, if you that. hadn't mentioned anything to me, I never in a million years would have noticed You're that. Like, Who's that baby gerbil? <laughs> 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 yeah. She's like, my Imagine eyebrows that, aren't done. Like, I'm like, oh, oh, we're done, by the way. You're ugly. We have those <laughs> eyelashes. We're breaking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, but yeah, you guys do worry about that stuff that I think we don't even. Yeah, I think, I don't know. It's, um, I don't know if it's right to say that we worry about. <laughs> I don't fucking know anymore. I don't, the thing is, is like the shit that I would have had a point of view on this when we were living in a society. Yeah. But since all this shit happened, I don't know how the fuck I feel about anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I go on Twitter and there's so many opinions and, and I can't, I can't tell who's crazy anymore. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. really can't. Like I, aside from the people who are like, really crazy. you know, all lives matter. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't know what, to think mm. about anything. Like I was looking through Kanye's shit like last night and I was like, yeah, this is nuts. But then I was looking at Biden's <laughs> speech and I was like, you know, at the at, the, at least at the end of Kanye's, uh, he was like, Adidas and I don't have a deal. 
Gap and I don't have a deal, and that ends today. And I was like, okay, the man's got a platform. You know what I, mean? I got, know what his point is. I know yeah. what his point is. Yeah. Biden is talking about his leg hair standing up <laughs> and somebody rubbing his legs. And I was like, I don't even know. This is like a man's speech at his 102nd birthday party. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck this is. Yo, he's just he's just riding it out too, though. Yeah. I mean, he's really not saying much. I feel like he's just like, uh, I'm, I'm... And that is smart. I, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, it's like, I'm not going to win this election. He might lose it. And that's all I'm going for. That is what, yeah. And I think that's the the smartest thing he can do because I mean I'm voting for Biden just because like I don't want to I feel like if I don't I'm voting for Trump but I or Kanye or Kanye well <laughs> I mean Jesus Christ I I do feel bad for Kanye I do but I you know when people were like this is crazy I was like yeah but have you seen this clip mm -hmm, right. of Biden right. you know what I mean and it was like just by as a comic I'm looking at what's the fucking Where's the hole in the theory? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so um, you know, but I'll 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 vote for Biden, and it's like I don't I'm not gonna love it. I think that when he speaks, it sounds like somebody's reading magnetic poetry from the fridge. <laughs> you know, like you're just like you're just picking words out of the air. <laughs> but the there is I I, I watched the show New Girl, which uh, I watched a lot during the pandemic. But there, yeah. there's an old episode where they're talking about like how to get. Uh, uh, Jess, the uh, uh, Zoe Deschanel is trying to get like a guy. Yeah, and they're like, you gotta just just be there, just always just be there, and then when you're the only option, you win. We call it Bidening, and I was like, <laughs> and that joke was from like seven years ago or right? yeah. yeah. how long ago? I was like, yeah, I was like, that's still playing today. That's just, fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. That still that's holds honest, up, especially in politics. It's half the battle. It's like. Just be around. Don't get caught doing this. Don't get arrested doing that. Don't yeah. you know? Just be there, and eventually it'll default to you. Yeah, I mean it'll all go to it's shit. The least inspiring fucking thing I've ever heard, but it's the I name mean, of the game. It's a fucking. I'm, that's the thing about politics, and I love this about politics is that it's all about like strategy, mm -hmm. and there are so many different strategies based off of what the other players are doing, mm -hmm. and it's it's really. I mean, if you compare it to Hollywood, it it really is Hollywood. It's just like Hollywood is hot people, and these are not old people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you ever wonder why everyone's so old in politics here? Like, if you look across like the world, yeah, like most politicians are like working age people. We yeah, just, all our like they're like, about these, to fucking like, like, die. Like in France, it's like Macron, or how you pronounce it. You got Trudeau in Canada. I Merkel's definitely know that's young. not how you pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how you pronounce it. But <laughs> like, you like, just call it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely M A R C O N. I just don't know how to. Uh, I tried to put a French twang on it. <laughs> <laughs> a, a French twang, like you're from Louisiana. <laughs> but like everyone's like working age, like 40, 50 years old, and here yeah. we're like. Yeah, I'll be 86. We're worried when he about the them dying. <laughs> yeah. I took the test, the, the test that the the cognitive test that they were talking about with Chris Wallace and Trump. And I thought it was a joke. Like I thought like this must be a spoof test. Yeah. It's it's just a test to see if you have like Parkinson's. <laughs> it's not like, are you smart? You know, yeah. can you be the president? It's literally there's a picture of a lion, a picture of a rhino, and a picture of a camel, and it says, "What are these animals?" Yeah, no, I I, I saw those questions. It's I was like, crazy. I was like, let me see this test, and I was like, oh god. <laughs> yeah, it's like that, it was like that easy. Although there was one thing, it was like, uh, I'm gonna repeat, I'm gonna say five words to you and repeat them back to me, and you know, it was like face, dairy, velvet, you know, it was like a few words, yeah. and I said it back, and then the next, but the next part was in five minutes, say it again. Uh, yeah, and five minutes later, I was like, oh, I can only remember like three of those. So maybe I have a little bit of dementia. I that's but that's not that's a lot to remember. For it it kind of was. Yeah, I was like, I mean, I got like four I feel or like five, that but. is a test that was invented before iPhones. Yeah, it's like this does not matter. Yeah, right? because I don't need nobody's to. got that attention span. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, five yeah. minutes is five minutes is way too long. Eternity, so long. Yeah. Like I can't remember if if my fiance is like, hey, oh, he asked me today. He's like, where's Barstool? I go on Instagram to check our DM to see where the fucking uh, address was. And it's like, I open Instagram and I'm like, forgot ooh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I just see like yeah. Andrew Collin posting like a picture <laughs> with his idiot. shirt off. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, this moron. And I just start going on a thing, you know? Like you can't remember anything. It, it takes me yeah. like three tries, like of picking up my phone to do something 
and putting it back down and being like, wait, no, fuck, that's what, I, and then right. picking it up, and then on the third try, I'll get to what I wanted to do initially. Yeah, I, I that's think what that's like, a all right. bad sign. No? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think we're all getting real dumb. <laughs> yeah, or real, maybe not dumb, but like not capable or not sharp. I don't know what it is. But it's, it's so bad. funny. He just picked two different words for dumb. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, not dumb, but like maybe stupid. <laughs> I might go out there and say, say maybe unintelligent, even. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love when that. I was literally. I I walked into the house. The, this reminds me. I walked into the house the other day and I saw Andy and I was like, "Hey, how was therapy?" He goes, "It was good." We talked about active listening and I was like, "Oh, nice. What's that about?" And he was like, "What?" Okay. Like he just wasn't. He was talking to me without listening to the questions. Like I was like, "This, forget it. I'm, we're done for the day." Uh, you, know? you mentioned Kanye before. Mm-hmm. I, um, do you think you can be uh, mentally ill like Kanye, but also just be an asshole? Um, yeah, you can be two things at like once. I'm, yeah, that's where I'm at. I feel like uh, I've been talking about him all week, and uh, when I saw him like melt down, I was like, this is just sad. But then when I saw his Twitter uh, bullshit, I was like, you're being an asshole. But then people were like, well, he's having an episode, and you can't say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I was See, like, I don't oh, think, I think he kind of can. I don't think those things about like him, you know, when he says all the shit that he's saying, I do I wouldn't go and go, oh, you're an asshole for doing that during a manic episode. Yeah. Like, I I think a manic episode can make you act like an asshole. Like, that is that is true. Right. But, but I also think he, I like, thinks these things. So I think, you know, uh, like, maybe he's, I think he's tweeting it because he's having an episode, but does he really think it? No, I because think here's, the thing, an here's the thing. I think there's a difference. Like, the only thing I can compare it to is, like, alcoholism, right? Because that's, like, my experience. So when I was drunk... If somebody, <laughs> this is, I'm putting this out there and it's not good, but um, <laughs> but if somebody like, I remember one time I, I went up to my friend and I was like, hey, what time is it? And he was like, oh, I don't know what time it is. But the way that he answered me, like he was just, there was something about it. Anyway, I punched him in the face <laughs> and I was hammered. I was blacked out. I don't know why the fuck I did that. It was, I was an active alcoholic mm. and alcoholism is as much a disease of the mind as it is of the body. Mm -hmm. So when I look back on those things, I don't say, I wouldn't go, oh, I'm not at fault for that. Like a grown man is at fault for not taking his medicine. Mm -hmm. But also Mm -hmm. if it's hard, if his disease is making him not want to take his medicine, he's also not at fault. It's like that gray Mm -hmm. area where you just go, this is mental illness. Like I can't necessarily, the only way to look at this is with compassion because the other option is to trash someone who deserves, who could deserve a second chance, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, And could mm -hmm. deserve some consideration. And like, I, I'm, when I read his tweets, I'm just like, oh Jesus, this is not good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, and it's, but the thing is with him, it's been that way for a long time. mm -hmm. It's been, yeah. Five plus years since like he was in a psychiatric ward. Yeah. Right? yeah. So yeah. it's like it's been it's been a long journey where you're just like, maybe at some point we should take the Twitter away. Or like I mean, we've been talking sure. about like, the Britney different. Spears with the conservative strip, conservative yeah. or whatever. And it's like not advocating for that, but like maybe the Kardashian family isn't the best family to be with right now. Yeah. Right, right, right. Maybe but, it's, but whenever somebody is acting out of a place of like mental illness, I think there's like a desire to reach for someone to blame, someone to put responsibility on, when in fact it's just something that is still misunderstood Mm -hmm. and still not completely figured out. And nobody's okay with just being like, hey, we haven't figured this out yet. Mm -hmm. Like maybe nobody knows the answer. And maybe that's okay for now. Like maybe we should leave it up to doctors to figure this out. You know, like... Well, we've seen how that goes around say, here. I don't, I don't know. This country, not America, a big fan of that. We don't like to leave things no, to the no, doctors. No, 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 no. I We're don't, not going to let the doctors no. and science get in the way of this. You guys, this is, this is the fucking problem, all right, with podcasts, all right? This is the fucking... Everybody's a fucking expert, you know what I mean? In America now, it's like everybody thinks they're such an independent thinker and they have the answers, and nobody's okay with just being like, "Yeah, I'm a fucking idiot." Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I Hand thrive up. there, and it's like I don't know I'm, anything right here. You know, but like that's and but that's great that, to that, admit this that because crystallized there's people listening. For me. And the, what's that? The, the pandemic, like when people do it about politics or the economy or whatever, because you have some experience working a job or right. voting for something. When we're talking about the spread of a fucking infectious disease, yeah. and anybody acted like they knew. Anything about it. Yeah. It's like, 
No, you don't. No, right. you fucking don't. Right. So just stop. And dude, when that shit about the pandemic came out, <laughs> I was fully on board. <laughs> when I first heard about this, before I knew it was like a conservative movement, and before I, I knew, I don't know like, if I know what this is. The pandemic. Were, it, it, it was, was like, like a COVID truther, yeah. like like someone who's like, oh, this is all planned by the government, uh, and like uh, now they're saying it was planned by the government to take Trump down. I just thought it was like actually planned by the government to keep us like in our homes and to keep us from like and to like further the generational wealth divide mm -hmm. and like and fuck with our money mm -hmm. basically. And that was honestly just a reaction. When I look back on it, I'm like, that was a reaction to just feeling completely fucking powerless over yeah, this shit. Yeah, it's like shit. I'll I'll go with this. At least there's a fucking yeah. answer here. Yeah, like, at least I, get I can it. blame someone. Yeah. I can point my anger mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah. When in fact, like. This is a this is like we're all just screaming in traffic for a year. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And the only people mm -hmm. that are being chill about it are dead. So <laughs> God, I can't wait to die. God, right? Just give me the sweet release of death. I know. It is terrible on this planet. I Living, know. forget it. I'm like, whatever. I know it's there's been a lot of fucking heartbreak. But we can honestly say that they are in a better place. Because <laughs> because anywhere else. Anywhere here. There could be bad. no afterlife. It could just be black dirt, and it would be better than this. No shit. Yeah. No, it Please would be God. better than Twitter. Um, yeah, it's nuts. It's fucking crazy. Are you doing any shows virtually or otherwise? Are you, is there anywhere you can get on stage at this point or what? You know, I've been doing shows for, um, so I've been doing Zoom shows since this thing started, kind of on the down low, like doing them for uh, like halfway houses and rehabs and mm. stuff, um, just to kind of like run my act. Cause it's not good. Like they're not, I'm not doing well, you know, <laughs> I'm like running the act to remember what my jokes sound like coming out of my mouth. Do you and like, do you like stand for like, do you have like a, like a mic thing or you kind of just sit in front of a computer? I got a green screen, green screen and I, and I sit in front of the computer and I use, I use my, you know, home equipment. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not like I, it doesn't, it's so weird. Cause you're like looking at a house full. They have one camera. And it's just a bunch of dudes on a couch, just mm. like, you know, coming off heroin. So you're like, if <laughs> right. I can get a laugh from these dudes, this joke is a keeper. The best yeah, joke yeah. ever. Yeah. 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 Um, and then we started doing parking lot shows. Uh, we started doing like ha outdoor shows, but they're, it's a fucking placebo. Like it feels, it doesn't feel right. You mm -hmm. know, it mm -hmm. feels like even the audience is like, it almost, it, if you were to do an outdoor show before COVID, um, everybody knows it's like, it's a fun outdoor show. We're doing this because we can, yeah, yeah. not because we have, have to. to. Yeah. And it's it's a little crazy. Like, mm -hmm. it's great to be getting back up and just kind of working out, the, like shaking the dust off, but it it still feels bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, you don't feel like the pod, like doing a podcast kind of like scratches that itch. You like this, just you have to be doing some sort of no, comedy it doesn't. show. It's yeah. like I need, uh, of course, like podcasting is great. You you do get some interaction with the fans and you mm -hmm. get to talk to them, but like there's nothing like the getting fucking hit by that laughter. Right. Like there's that feeling is, I mean, I, it was my whole life. Like, and I feel a lot. This I don't mean to sound depressing, but like, You've come to the my right whole place. fucking Still life on. is just like, I don't know who the fuck I am. Like for real, I like have had a year where I was just like, holy shit! If I don't, if I'm not doing stand up, what am I doing? Oh, so you mean like on you, you kind the of put planet? Like all your eggs <laughs> in that basket, and then when it was taken away, it's like holy shit. Yeah, because mm. it's like it's not just the it's not just the act of getting up every night. It's like the family that you have and the people that you're surrounded by and that like that back and forth and just the common language and um there's there's just a bond that I have with comics that I don't even have with my own family mm. and when it, it almost felt like we were in a cult and it was going well <laughs> and then the government broke it up mm -hmm. and now everybody's just like well how do we live mm -hmm. cuz this Crazy. is how we live right right um so it's very weird yeah but think about you know the alternative is like if you don't even have that if you just have like a regular ass job and that sucks and then everything else sucks you don't even yeah. feel you don't ever feel the, yeah. the highs of when it's good you know yeah i mean 
I I do recognize how blessed I am to miss something this much. Right. You yeah. know, like mm -hmm. it has kind of made me understand like the shit that I bitched about, about going on the road and being lonely and all, all of that was like, why the fuck did I complain? Like mm -hmm. I was, I had the best fucking job. <laughs> right. You know? And you know what's funny too though is like you, you say that and you're like, so now I've like got this new perspective or whatever. Oh, I'll and be bitching by the second I get back. A hundred percent. As soon as it's back, like yeah. you're on the road at some The fun part hotel, is like, the bitching. This. Yeah. Like the, yeah. <laughs> the fun part of work is bitching about being at work. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> I mean, it's just like the fun part of being in the pandemic is bitching about the pandemic. Right. Yeah. And when we're back at work, we're all going to be like, God, we had it so fucking easy. I wish easy. I could go like, back home and sit on the couch. Put makeup on and pants on. Like, yeah. we, were, we were living the dream back yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, do, were you guys like psyched when this first happened? When it first happened, yeah. When it first oh. happened, we were big advocates. Like, this is sick. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. And like, I, not like this is sick. Like, we acknowledge that there was a pandemic happening. Yeah. But for our little worlds, it was nice to be like, because oh. we, I mean, we've been doing this for 10 years. And like, when before, like, when we were just a blog, we never left the houses because I lived in Boston. Kevin lived here. Like yeah. there were like four other employees who all lived like in their own homes. We didn't have an office, yeah. so we're we like just went back to what we used. We're to like do. back to the old days, boys. Yeah, Let's yeah, get yeah. this grind going. Yeah, and then like that lasted like two weeks, and then we still had like a little bit of fun for like. I was going I strong know. for a while, but I got but... like I got like two months. I, I got no. I you know I think I did the full bid. I think I was like, look, they want three months. I'll hit you three months. I can do that for you. Yeah, and then after three months, I was like. Okay, like I, I, I knew what I signed up for. I knew there was light at the end of the tunnel. None of you other fucking assholes listened, and now I'm stuck here. Still. Yeah, you're pissed because you held up your end of the deal, mm, yeah, and everybody shit. else and fucking did. Month, month four was a rough month. <laughs> month. Yeah, month four was a tough one. Yeah, but it's gotten a little bit better since then. I think because we're, we're back in the office now, a couple and, days a week. Yeah. yeah, you need you do need something to make like being on the couch at home. You need like light and dark, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when it's just sitting on the couch the whole time, you start to take it for granted. Yeah. You come back to work, you commute, whatever. It's like, oh, I wanna get the fuck back home. You yeah. need like the balance. Yeah, but. and I will say like, the shit that I, I'm like noticing my humanity returning in ways that I didn't realize it left. Like where I'll take my dogs for a walk and I'm like enjoying it, you know? <laughs> like I'm like, okay, I I can clean my house and just like, do the dishes and actually be fulfilled by those activities in a mm -hmm. weird way where mm -hmm. it's like before I would just be like anything that isn't stand up related or like something that I want to do that I decided to do is bullshit to me and I'm not going to do it. Like mm -hmm. I was, I just, I was so um, locked into work and workaholism and like the that was just the way that I functioned that now I'm like, okay, I, you know, I can I can live a little bit, like yeah. mm -hmm. and like go on trips with my fiance and like go hiking and shit and watch him like play in a river, which <laughs> I, I won't do, but he's into it. I've gotten a bit of that with the phone. I've gotten particularly good because I've and I was again ten years of like blogging where like you, you had to be on the internet yeah. twenty four seven. Where like I just got so incredibly locked into my phone, and then like during the pandemic, I realized I was like I can just put this down for a little bit. And yeah. like, that's okay. I, you know, I don't need to be on it. Yeah. And now, like, I'm, I'm getting, I, I'm getting like almost too good at it now. Where I'm like, I'll just leave my phone in the other room for like three hours. Who cares? Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's nice. I, I can't wait to join you there one day, bro. It's nice to be there, but also now I'm starting to worry at the other end. Like, am I not on it enough again? And it's only been like a few weeks of me working on not being on it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It feels, um, it feels a little bit like there's, I don't. know. For a while, I was like, am I, like, a frontier person, you know? Because we were in L.A., which is so um, spread out. And so, mm -hmm. like, there was nothing to do but, like, cook and mm -hmm. and hike. <laughs> and I was like... I fucking love hiking in L.A. It's I like, do, too. You, I, I love I'm walking. I'm not, like, anti-hiking. It's just, like, I just never hear anyone, like, talk about it, like, outside of L.A. Yeah. Everyone goes, like, L.A., yeah, we went to is that the where Canyon. You, yeah. Do you live here or you live in L.A.? I live here eight months out of the year, and then I usually go to L.A. for, like, four. You just, have a place in, in both spots? Or you no, I'll figure no. it out. I always just, like, figure it out mm -hmm. and then take four months' worth of clothes. It's unmanageable. It's not. I don't <laughs> that, recommend it. I guarantee that's a fucking fiasco. Yeah, it is Every not time you're good. like, all right, time to leave for four months. Let me just yep. pack my stick and bindle here and hit the 100%, fucking road. 100%. Yeah. I take my dog on a plane <laughs> like a white woman and I just <laughs> fucking just get on the plane and like go. And I thought for sure when I left this January, I was like, okay, I'll be out there for two months. I'll, I'll be out there for pilot season. Um, and 
or part of pilot season. And I was there through May because we just, oh, wow. we were like quarantining. And I, mm. I fucking moved apartments in January, in February, in March, oh. and then stayed from March through May in the same place and then moved back here. Oh, so that it was is like, a lot. It so was you moved insane. in and out of a place? Yeah. Like that's like in out once, in out twice, in out three times. That's like eight times you moved? Yeah. I mean, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I was just like, I don't know, you're like, kind of always on the road anyway, so it, it's yeah, I, I can so. kind of just bring a bunch of belongings and figure the rest out. Yeah. And I'm, that's I'm kind of that I way. I always say I live a life like a... Like one of the assassins in Jason Bourne, where it's like, <laughs> yeah. I got, I can, just, I got a bag, I got a go bag. Yeah, that's. I, I'm gonna start go saying that because that sounds better. <laughs> than, you're an assassin than what it really is, <laughs> which is just like a homeless. I'm a disorder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like you get like in the, if you've seen the movies, they're, like, they're just sitting there waiting for like the next thing to happen, and that's basically what I do when I go yeah. on the road on a trip or wherever. I'm just like, I'm just gonna sit in this room. Till someone tells until me to go to another go. room. Yeah, until the world 100%. tells me. hundred percent. That is exactly what it's like. You just you go to mm. some. I can't tell you the towns I've been in. Like I can I can tell you the clubs I've been at, but I can't remember like where they were. Or like I'll picture a town that I was in, and I'll be like, oh yeah, that was Nebraska, and somebody's like, no, that was Idaho, mm -hmm. or like that was fucking Huntsville. Like, yeah, I said or what, what I said. Yeah, I just have no <laughs> idea. Fucking shit, man. Yeah, they're all the <laughs> same. On that. Yeah, they're all the same. <laughs> Anyway. Well, I appreciate you coming through. Yeah. That was, this very was so fun. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you guys. That was a blast. Yeah, Thanks for uh, enlightening me about the Diva Cup. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's yeah, a, we, we, we really ran the gamut on topics today. Yeah, we hit it yeah. all. We touched them we all. We started Sorry I couldn't make you puke. I really. <laughs> I honestly got it. It was. It was close. Yeah, it was right. It was like, well, it, once I get it down, I'm good. Yeah. But like when I just hear something totally new, if it's you watch, like, If you watch the instructional video, yeah, yeah, but that'd probably get me. That'd yeah. probably get me. We should have brought that up. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. we just learned last last week that uh, pussies clean themselves. <laughs> yeah, and that was a new that was a thing for us. for us. Yeah, and then I yeah. learned about this goddamn pussy bucket cup, and I was just like, <laughs> "Oh, I don't know anything about vaginas." Ah! <laughs> I hope plastic pussy bucket cup is the name of this episode. Oh, I yeah. really hope. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank Rose you guys. Much. That was fun. Uh, I I, I want to say thank you, Rose. Bob, but also like I mean she's ruined my life with the diva cup. Oh, like, I'm no. just gonna be I thinking about it. a as couple. As soon as I got it down, I was like, "It's the diva cup's funny." But uh, it's funny, but I'm just gonna be thinking about like I'm gonna be looking at girls, being like, "You got a, a pussy bucket inside you right now? <laughs> blood bucket? What's going on <laughs> in there?" The idea of people reusing them. I mean, Christ, all that man. is that's a little much. It's like when yeah. parents do like diapers. It's like we yeah. use we use like the felt diapers yeah, or whatever no, no, it is. No, no, uh, no, 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 thank you. No. Uh, so shout out to Rosebud. Let's not talk to Paul Verzi. Uh, I've been on his show before. I did a video series of his that's out now called uh, Dude, I Called It. First time I've ever, I think, hopefully, called something correctly in the sports world. But Paul's stand-up comic. He's from my town, or from my county, I should say, Westchester. Uh, Paul, a uh, big Bur Bill Burr guy and a uh, real funny New York attitude. So let's talk to him. Paul Verzi. You got it. We got Paul Verzi on KFC Radio. Uh, I did his show a little while back, and a new episode of his uh, web series, uh, Dude, You Called It, is out, where I'm looking better every day with that one, Paul. I uh, I told him how I was convinced that Steve Cohen was eventually going to own the Mets, and we did this like earlier in quarantine when it was still uncertain, and now my boy is coming to the forefront as the main bidder, and I think it's the first time maybe in my entire history that I predicted something right in sports. <laughs> Dude, it's it's looking really good. As a matter of fact, we had um we had a couple people on. We had Tom Green on. We had uh, Bill Burr, yourself, Tim Dillon, and you look like the one that when we revisit this is uh is going to be the winner here. Really? <laughs> what was Tim's? I feel like Tim predicted like the, the downfall the of society. Gis Gisland Maxwell. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did Tim say? No, Tim said that he um he thinks you're not going to be able to enter any ball games or anything moving forward without getting your temperature taken. Oh, that's pretty fair. Yeah. I, I expected more from Tim, to be honest. That, I, think that's, I think that's pretty fucking obvious at this point. Um, what do you, you think my boy looks hung over here? 4, 4 p.m. we're working right now, and my man's still going through it. It's his, he says he gets one or two hangovers per year, and this is the one for him. Dude, all right, I'm going to be honest with you. I just got over mine 45 minutes ago. <laughs> I did. The, we went to my mother-in-law's pool last night with the kids, and it was one of those things where she was like, "You want to stay for steaks?" 
And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, let me make you this drink I make. And she makes me this one. And it was just in a pool, had the drink. I was like, I need another one of those. Then we go to the cellar and get two bottles of wine. Dude, it was, yeah. So it took me until about a good two at two o'clock, a little 2.45 to be like back. If so anyone hear- if anyone ever offers you like, this is this drink I make, that's 100% going to knock you on your ass. Yep. For a long yeah. time, like no, no one's like, here's this drink I make, and it's fucking pineapple juice. Right. Like it's like it's got like and, six different rums in it. If you're talking about like it's your mother-in-law who made it, so she's 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 wise. She's a veteran of the game. She's seen some shit. She's cooking up something that doesn't taste bad at all, but will get yeah. you absolutely fucking hammered. Yeah. That yeah. that's that's a dangerous one. You got to stay away from, or you just got to. And also, I think when you're drinking in a pool, I think you get yeah. drunker in a pool. When you're surrounded by a body of water, it just goes through you faster. Well, that was my next thing to say is that if you're in a pool and it's 95 degrees and the pool is amazing and somebody gives you a good drink, chances are you're going at least one or two more. I swear to God, I I, I do this thing where when I sip my first drink, when I sip, sip number one on drink number one, I know right after that sip, I'm having another one. Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I'm having another one. This is just delicious. I I feel like I know when, uh, like within that first sip, I'll be like, mm, yep, we're blacking out tonight. Like, forget about my second drink. I either know, like, ah, that kind of went down like glass or, like, you know, I got some shit to worry about. But when I know, all right, schedule's clear. This drink was good. I got the twinkle in my eye. We're, yeah. we're, we're, I, I, can t- I can sense that one coming. I feel like Saturday night around 6 o'clock when you don't have anything else to do on Sunday and there's either, like, UFC fights or, like, you know somebody's coming over, maybe smoke a cigar and have one or two, you know Sunday's going to be a little, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a little rough. I was going to say Monday. Like, like <laughs> that. Let me, let me tell you two a little secret. I don't have anything tomorrow but therapy. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am going to get drunk as soon as I finish this interview. Well, <laughs> hair of the dog, baby. It never fails. It never fails, dude. Yo, so, uh, Paul, I had my uh, uh, birthday for my three-year-old, and um, I, I, I don't know if I can even – I don't know if I should say this, but – Coronavirus is the best thing that's ever happened at little kids' birthday parties, man. It was fucking great. We kept it tight. Just had a couple family members over. I inflated a little fake pool. I didn't have to worry about, like, his friends coming over and the parents that I don't really know. I didn't have to rent out a place for, like, two grand. He splashed around around in the pool, had the time of his fucking life. I was like, I wish every birthday could be coronavirus, COVID-19 quarantine. This is great. Dude, I do a blowout 4th of July party that just ha- it, it happened a couple years ago and then it just turned into this tradition. And normally it's like 50, 60 people and it's a lot, man. I'm barbecuing, finding out how everyone's doing. This year, we were only able to have a small gathering, but I still put on the fireworks show mm. that's incredibly illegal and everybody <laughs> wants to see. And, and you know what? When you only got to entertain and make burgers and dogs for like a handful and you still have the same great time, it's like it's, it's the same thing. It's incredible. It, yeah. it, it was so much easier. I saved so much money. And what do you think about this move? So uh, I, I went out. I got a shit ton of presents. I wrapped them all up. Great rapper, by the way. Great present rapper. Yeah, Kevin's a very good rapper. It's my hidden talent. Nobody would realize it, but I can fucking rap. It's like I'm like Martha Stewart with that shit. It's crazy. Wow. Well, you always like that? Yep. Or that- I like Ever since we were little kids, like when we would get like a present for our dad or my mom or whatever, I was always the one to wrap it. Even my, even my sister. Even when you were a that. kid? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it went I, back like that. I see the Matrix with it, bro. I just, <laughs> I just get it. Kevin, Dude, Kevin wraps presents so good that you see him and you're like, I hope no one ever opens that. So it, guess what? It, it looks very he, nice. He didn't. Nobody opened those presents. <laughs> so the one present uh, I had that I couldn't wrap was a big bag of like dinosaur toys. And it was like a clear plastic bag. So he went right for that, was playing with these dinosaurs all day, and yeah. had no interest in anything else. So I just fucking took all the presents back, and I'm just going to give it to him during potty training. Every time he pisses in the toilet, here's a gift. Is that I okay? Th- I thought you were going to return him. No, no, I'm not going to return him. But is it okay to buy, and then he does, he's not interested in anything else, and I just stash the presents away for another time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right? Or am I, you can call me. Am I being a cheap asshole? Should I just buy no, another no. set of gifts no. too? I think you're a good dad for thinking of it because, you know, a, a real piece of shit would just, just do it. Yeah. You, know, if you thought about it for a second. You were like, wait a minute. Is this a shit? Okay, you know what? And you actually, so that makes you, it makes it okay. Oh, boy. How, how, the bar is so low. Uh, all the you have to bar do is, is think about so low. You're spot on. You're like, all right, you acknowledged it. 
You're a good person, though. Yeah. Like, a, <laughs> like a real cheap piece of shit. It's like, oh, great, next year. You know, yeah. like, you actually have to go, is this cool? Like, am I, is this, I am kind of shit. But yeah, no, it's okay. Like, and I think and that then, that's. And then the beauty of it is co Corona, man. Cor I mean, yeah. you know, I just, I couldn't give them all his gifts. COVID-19. I don't know what that means, but sure. Fuck it. Whatever, man. Right, right. That checkout lady, she looked a little squirrely. I wasn't sure. I had to save it for a few months. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go back. Uh, you tried to get back on stage, like right after you did get back on stage, right after we talked, or right before we talked, I guess. Uh, are you still back out there, or was that kind of like? I feel like a lot of comedians tested the waters. A couple people tested positive, things didn't go well, and some people shut it down. Are you still out there, or was it just a one and done? No, so I, I went out to when I went out to Arizona, you know, because once I had once me and my family had the antibodies, I I called my uh, my agent uh, I called, and William Morris was really good because they actually called hospitals out there. I got to give them credit. Like we, they weren't sending me out there and I wasn't going out there until, even though I had antibodies, until we really asked questions. And I was, they were like 50% 50, 50 capacity. Um, you're going to be completely separated, no meet and greets, blah, 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 this and that. They called hospitals, everything seemed. And then when I got out there, literally like the days I was out there, they start, I was in the suburbs of Phoenix. So it wasn't that bad, but they started to, there were like rumblings of, dude, Phoenix, it's going to be really bad. So I did the shows. The shows were amazing. Got back. And then like two weeks later, they shut it down. Mm -hmm. And then last week I was at Governor's in Long Island to just do, um, I was in Levittown. They just said, do you want to do a patio show Saturday night, two shows? And I ended up doing that. I was like 12 feet away from the front row of people. And mm -hmm. I did it. It sucks because my, I'm in a weird position. We're, we're ready for the next hour. So the next special, we were we're ready to go. It's just a matter of the date and doing it. Mm. Well, I actually I'll take that though because it's not like I just put something out and now I haven't worked any material. I'm ready. Right. To go. Mm. right. Everybody that wants to be a part of this is like it's better than I'll say this, and I'm proud of I'll say this. So it's like I'm ready to go. We're ready to put it out there. It's just a matter of when I can do it. But I want it to stay sharp. Mm -hmm. Now, now it looks like I got to pick and choose where I'm going to go, and 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 it's just like, is it going to be weeks? Because I I've said this before, and this is not against any comedians, none of my peers. I'm not trying to talk shit about anybody. People got to make money, but I'm just not standing on the back of a fucking pickup truck yelling at cars. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put on rubber gloves and stand on a picnic table and I'm not doing it. No. So I, I work so hard and those are like such hell gigs when you're coming up. And now that like, so I'll, I will do things, but they need to be conducive to comedy and they need to be what comedy should be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, do you feel like when you have the antibodies, I feel like I would be like a goddamn superhero. I feel like I'm in the Avengers. I'd be like walking around like, whatever, come at me, man. I'm good. <laughs> I did until all of these doctors are telling us different things. You know, yeah, one doesn't really help last three months. Another doctor is like, it could be like the flu shot where in a year, you, you know, you can get it again. And they just unfortunately just don't know. So that's that's the but I do feel better that my body saw it and was like, oh, like if it comes back, it's like, oh, I remember you. Yeah. I can find you right. then. Yeah. So right. I do feel it's like you won the fight. You got in a scrap. You felt shitty, but whatever. Like, yeah, you can handle yourself. You know what you're doing. Yeah, like, if I if COVID was a dude and I saw him at the end of the bar after the first fight, size I just him up. Look at him and be like, we know what happened the first time. I want to go back outside. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I had a buddy who who uh, didn't have the antibodies. Oh, he has the antibodies now, but he he had COVID too, which is weird. I've only had one friend who had COVID. Like, I I know a, a fairly good amount of people. I know I know one person who yeah. had this like incredibly infectious disease, but he likes telling everyone that he's invincible. <laughs> and like he got in like a literal fight about it with his dad where he was like, I'll go to the market, I'm invincible. And, <laughs> and his dad was like, Shut the fuck up! Stop saying you're invincible. <laughs> if you know him, it's even better. I get to see him saying that too. I'm invincible. You pussies, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll take it, I'm invincible. <laughs> That, you know, we just don't like, that's the thing. We don't know. And what's mm. scary is they're saying things with their heart. Yeah. So like I'm asking my doctor, like are, are me and my, cause my wife, my, we all had it. So it's like, are we going to be in five years? Is there going to be something that happens that's because of that? And they're saying they don't think so, but it's just kind of, it's just up in the air, man. It's like, uh, you gotta just be a clown to not be cautious. You know what I mean? It's like, sure you have it, but don't be a fucking idiot. I mean the, the people doing meet and greets, I, I, I mean, I gotta be honest. I, again. I don't want to. I don't. I, I don't even have anybody specifically in mind. I don't know which comics have done them and who hasn't. But if you're a comic doing a, a meet and greet right now, not only are you an idiot, you're just a fucking asshole. It's the most 
conducive thing to spreading disease. You know what I mean? It's like, let's get everybody together and make sure they all talk to you and touch you and get close enough that they can get it and you can spread a fucking disease. It's insane to want to do that. It's just such a narcissistic, selfish thing to do when it's like, look, man, when this thing goes away, you'll be able to do that all you want. But like the more you're doing that, the longer we're not going to be able to do it. Right. You right. Know, I, yeah. yeah. You're ruining it for like the future. So just shut it down now and wait till it's all fucking better. Uh, what else is cooking out there, man? You bat, you're up in the 914, right? You're still in, in Westchester. What's going on uh, otherwise? Love it. No, nothing, man. You know, it's like w- without doing the stand up when we're ready to go, it's building the YouTube channel, which is going great. The dude I called it web series and just trying to, you know, got two kids. So trying to stay busy with them. Um, how old are your kids? My kid, my son is, uh, my son just turned 11. My daughter just turned eight. So you want them back to school, right, bro? <laughs> Uh, you know what? <laughs> I mean, I know you don't if it's dangerous, but you want them to get out of the fucking house, right? It's it's because with them, it's just always look like we will we will go to a friend's house, stay all day. They're in the pool. They're playing PS4, and then it's a great day. And then the, and as soon as we get home, hey, so tomorrow what can are we, we doing? do? I- <laughs> And they're just like, I mean, we just did that. Like, there's, there could be not 10 minutes right. of them just having. And I go, why don't you just sit down in your room and, and play by yourself? You got a, He just got an iPhone 11. And he's just like, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know if school's going to happen in September in, in Westchester. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, the, 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 if, if you can't entertain yourself now as a kid, I mean, could you imagine your kid's. Back in the day, back even in, I don't even remember what I used to fucking do. I used I, to just like climb a tree and then jump out of it and like climb it again. I don't know. Before you figure out, you can like, I used watch to porn read and jerk off. Of what shampoo. You yeah, you just read I, shit. I used to just, like that's it. I would read. I I'd get. I'd get random ingredients. I would just read. That's <laughs> that's what I did to entertain myself as a yeah, that's child. Some boring like, ass shit. How goddamn like I. That's gonna be like my like uphill school both ways kind of deal. Like I used I to read like, shampoo. I was like, while I was shitting, I used to read the ingredients of two. Paste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm reading Ajax bottles. Yeah. And now you could read anything in the world. <laughs> like literally, you could see what's going on. Like with with um, that's the other thing. We, me and Giannis, me and Giannis, just we got um, we got guns against our wives. Uh, oh, okay. This should go good. You two idiots yes. with fucking firearms. Let's see how this plays out. So we go to, it was kind of, it was kind of my fault. Like I said to Giannis, I go, Hey dude, you want to go to Dick's? I got to go get something. He goes, oh, yeah, no. I want to get weights. Like he wanted to get like free weights or whatever. Cause all the gyms, everything. Wait, 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 wait. You, you, you guys got guns by, by accident. And, and, and you're like, ah, fuck it. No, a nine so millimeter will do it. Dude, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. So, <laughs> so Giannis, one of my closest friends, neighbor, hilarious. So we, he, we talk, we hang all the time, you know, and we were quarantined together. So I was like, he's like, I gotta go to, I'll go to Dick's too. Like I needed to get something for my son. Then he's like, I want to get free weights. I can't go to the gym. So I just go, let's go look in the hunting thing. Let's just go. So the hunting thing was emptied out. There was no rifles, no shotguns. But then that got me, you know, when you kind of have your mind on something. So then mm-hmm. I called another Dick's. And we're like, yeah, I go, you guys got that wasn't enough of a sign. Don't get guns, Paul. <laughs> I'm going to now track down the firearms. And my, oh, by the way, let me, my, let me, let me, let me uh, go back and say my wife does not want, my wife wanted to have a discussion first because mm-hmm. I bought a Lexus once without, like, she just got a call from Geico and she mm-hmm. goes, are you buying a car? And I was like, yeah. And that did not go well. <laughs> so now uh, we go to this other dicks. I called up. I said, you guys got firearms in there? I said, I'm looking for a rifle, looking for shotgun. Uh, Giannis and I both first time gun owners. If we do this, we don't know what we're doing. I can't believe Giannis is a first time gun owner. Yeah. I figure Giannis had a fucking like full Artillery. on like, like a whole assault room of just <laughs> things to kill people with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we the guy see I see this like camouflage like twenty two rifle and he goes, Oh, that's a single shot. He goes, We got a semi automatic ten shot if you want. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah. So let me look at that. So it's a twenty two, it's light, it's easy. So then Gian, I go, Giannis, hold this thing. Giannis holds it. He's like, oh, my God, this is light, easy. You know, it looks like a BB gun. And we're like, yeah, we'll take two. We'll take two, right? <laughs> so, How much does a gun like that run you, by the way? I don't know. Any, you could tell me that's like $1,000, $100. I have no, I have no idea. The, the tag on the gun was $219. But once you got the, 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 the case for it, the ammo for it, the cleaner for it, you're talking like probably $350. Okay. That's still not yeah. – I mean, yeah. So – now we buy like uh, this that we buy a, uh, 1100 rounds for 60 bucks in a box, these 22. And, and 
it was one of those dicks where you had to go down in the escalator. So I didn't have service. Oh, so I tried oh, to you couldn't call. I'm sorry, honey. Couldn't call you before I bought this incredibly dangerous thing. So, so the guy's like, ah, oh, you know, it's a small game gun. It's, you know, it's, it's possums and, and, and squirrels not going to kill anybody. And me and Giannis kind of felt like bitches because there were people online. So I'm like, no, but if we go up close, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I could kill someone though, right? I could kill him. If I put it in the guy's fucking mouth. <laughs> 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 I was like, if it's up to his temple, he's gone, right? <laughs> so, I mean, there was literally a woman online going, yeah, it's a nice gun. It's kind of like a target gun, but, you know, my dad and his son, nothing. Like, it was a, literally a blonde woman saying that to us. So uh, Giannis felt comfortable because it wasn't too powerful. I felt comfortable, but my wife, we go upstairs. They have to walk. So when you buy a gun at Dick's, just so for your listeners, when you buy a gun, you have to, all you really have to have if it's a rifle or shot because you have to have a valid license with the address on your license matching where you really live or the registration of your car with the matching address. That's it. Jesus then after Christ. that, obviously, Guess what? You can't I can't buy a gun. Born. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I could. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a felon, you know, it's over. So um, they have to walk you out now. So they have to walk you to the car with it, and the bullets cannot be in the trunk with the uh, like the bullets and the gun need to be in separate parts of the car, backseat trunk. They Got can't it. be together. So I'm paying for this thing, and my wife texts, "Where are you guys?" I said, "We're at Dick's." She says, "Get anything?" I said, "We just bought rifles." She waited, and then I just saw the the three dots, and then she goes, "I hope you're kidding." Mm -hmm. And I look over at Giannis and I go, dude, I go, you're going to have to come in the house. Because she, her and Giannis are friends. I go, you got to come in with me. And, and, he goes, <laughs> and, I go, and I go, and he looked at me and I go, buddy, I've known you for years. I looked at him, guys, with the most sincerity. I go, you got, I've never asked you for a favor. I go, you got to come in the house with me. And he just starts laughing. And then he's texting with his wife and he goes, hold on. This isn't going great either. <laughs> <laughs> True story. My wife goes, you better be, you know, you better be kidding and be getting home with flowers or something. Long story short, we go home to our wives. They're not happy. I got two bouquets of flowers and the gun. I walk in with the gun and the flowers. I give her the flowers. I call a Literally family. Literally guns and roses. <laughs> Literally guns and roses. I call a family meeting about this, how serious it was. And I got to be honest, she was only pissed. See, this is what happened. And and I don't, I'm not trying to encourage your listeners. But this is what happened. I noticed something. She was mad, guys, for probably two hours. But then I realized something. She liked it, too. She liked it. <laughs> there's a thing there, okay? And I'm not trying to be some macho some guy. primal shit, not, though, right? Yeah. There's a thing where it's like, I'm going to protect my fucking family. It's it's only... And, and oh, here, oh, here's a part that I left well, out. Well, you're going to take your family from possums. Yeah, if, you, if, you're, if your family's attacked <laughs> by a, a, a swarm of quails, <laughs> then... <laughs> I told, her, I told her online when she said, I hope you're kidding. I said, it's basically a BB gun. That's what I told her. And, and then she found out that it was not. And we have a friend who's a cop who came over and Stacy goes, Paul, why don't you ask? Can a 22? And, the, and my buddy who's a cop, he goes, oh, dude, that'll kill. That kills the most people. No, just, <laughs> not, That's not why like, I invited you over here, man. <laughs> squirrels and enjoy our drink. <laughs> I love that move of bringing Giannis in. Cause that's like such like a, a a relatable moment when you're like, look, I know my girlfriend's mad at me. Like, will you just stay here? For you a need cover. Bit? Like, she's not gonna yell at me if you're here. Right. So, will you just she stick will, around, please? She'll berate me. <laughs> she won't say anything to another man, another woman's husband. You're you're just you're just there. Literally, get the gun out and provide some cover for me. That's <laughs> that's why you're there, man. Did did you have to do the same for for uh, oh, him? I blacked out him. Oh. What's that? Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. So. We went to, we got tickets to the, when I opened for Burr at the Garden the first time, mm -hmm. not this last time, but the first time, uh, you know, we got, like, we got perks. So we go to Ranger game, we're sitting with, like, Tom Hanks, and we're drinking. Dude, me, Bill, the our buddy who owns Gotham Comedy Club, all a bunch of people went out, and, I mean, they're throwing, we're throwing down vodka sodas, like, half and half, so vodka mm -hmm. and soda, dude. And by the end of the night, we go to a bar after the game. I mean, it was, and I got to come up to Westchester. I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I'm hanging out with them. And I go to uh, Burr's apartment and Burr goes, Verzi, I can't, you got to sit down. You can't go. And I go, no, I got to, he goes, you got to sit down. And I had to get my son on the bus at seven o'clock in the morning. Oof. He goes, dude, I'm not letting you drive. 
you're not driving. So he goes, just sit down, do two hours, knowing that I pass out. Dude, I passed out cold and I woke up. I looked at my phone. I'll never forget. It was 719 and my wife is crying. Say, I got to explain to your son. And I go, no, I did the right thing. Anyway, Burr, he jumped on a grenade for me. He called her and he goes, hey, he took a little mustard off the fastball. He goes, listen, he goes, it's, he did the, trust me, he was in no position. So just kind of go easy on him. So then I went, went, but you need a friend like, like if Giannis or Bill or my buddy Bartnick, or like, there's a few people that if they call Stace, my wife, and they're like, Stace, trust me, he did. Then she'll be, she'll still be mad, but it, it really eases the blow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need, and those are like, and you, it can't just be any friend too. It's like, if you have like, you know, your, your, your 10th friend on the list call, it's like, I don't give a fuck what Steve has to say, mm. but if it's Giannis or Bill or some like the yeah, OG guys, then they get it. If it's like your top five that have been in your home eating dinner with your wife multiple. It, yeah, exactly. You can't and just you know what it is? It's not that she's any really less mad and maybe Bill explains, you know, you do the smart thing to drive or whatever. Really yeah. what it is is she now knows that Bill knows the situation and that if she's like a stark raving asshole to you, like everybody knows. You know what I'm saying? It's all, it's all, It almost like it, it, it makes her be like, well, now I can't be a total dick to him because Bill knows. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, because then they're going to ask how had that go. Right, right, yeah, right, 100%. Right. And it's like now, now you've let someone into our business, so now I got to like mitigate it a little bit and also I'm going to shoot you with the gun and, you know, whatever. My, my father did the same thing. He told us a story, uh, like the same thing with you and the Lexus. When my dad had a, uh, I think a Toyota Supra, like an old like 80s, like two-door two coupe. And uh, my brother was either born or she was about to pop him out. And she was like, you know, we can't have this like sports car anymore. You got to go, uh, go get like a family car. So he takes the, the, the Toyota Supra down to like the dealership. And he gets talked into a second one. And he comes home with another sports car. And my mom was like, are you fucking kidding me? He was like, it was a great deal. He gave me this. He gave me that. She's like, what are we going to do with two two-door coupes, you asshole? Like, I, couldn't, I couldn't turn it down. You guys just did that with guns, basically. What a world, man. Dude, my brother would buy us. A, 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 my brother, my older brother, Christian, he's five years older than me. He can't say no. He can't say no, like to the point where somebody knocked on his door and sold him a fourteen hundred dollar vacuum, which he he, he didn't need. He lived in like a studio, and he was just like, "Oh, that gives a nice guy." No, and then then he started doing the fucking vacuum is no joke though. You <laughs> I, that could happen to you. Oh, if you if you oh. lived in the era of door to door salesmen, you would own knives and vacuums and fucking Dude, all sorts of shit. I I came to New York for a field trip once as a kid. And like I ran out of like the money my parents had given just me. Buying shit. No, buying just CDs from guys in Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are great. They they put it in your hand. They squeeze your hand around it, and they're like, "Well, you bought it. Now you got to get it. Like, you have no choice." Like this is the third time this happened today. <laughs> no, you know what? That really says something about the person you are. I believe people like that. So when I was like twenty, twenty one, like twenty one years old, when I. I dropped out of college to do stand up, but I obviously needed income. So I was selling phone cable internet door to door in Queens and Manhattan for uh, RCN. And I was literally 21 years old, making like 50 a year. And at 21, that's like, you know, it was like just, you know, knocking doors. But people that were, you could tell there's some people that just, no, nope, like close the door and close. But then there were those people that like were just like, you know, like you. <laughs> I'll listen to you. Suckers, go yeah. on. <laughs> Dumb assholes. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> you're taking advantage of. No. But, uh, you know, you could tell, man. And it was wild to do. It was wild to see how people would react, man. And I, uh, I saw some, I could tell you this. I saw some really fucking wild shit knocking door to door in Queens. And you, I, I went to one apartment and I can't prove it. But there was, it smelled like they were cooking or making drugs and it, it was weird. Mm -hmm. There was like, it was like sterile and weird. One time this woman was like walking to the door angry. And I'll never forget this, dude. She's walking in the door angry and she comes in and I don't really see her, but she's dressed nice. She's got like jeans and a sweater and she gets there and half of her face was like burned off. And the other half was like gorgeous. And I remember being like, and normally I could, but it took me back because I was just like, because I'm normally, you know, I'm going to fight for the sale. We got more HBOs. We got, like, <laughs> well, we got one HBO. And, and, and you saw things. And I remember, and you could see the anger in her, probably obviously because of what she went through. 
and I was just like, wow. Like, so I saw some things and it would, it made me feel so bad for her and what yeah. she's going through, but it, it kind of took the fight out of me. Yeah, it's right, like, I'm right. not going to sell you this shitty cable package. You only have half a face. <laughs> yeah, like, and I, dude, I saw, yeah, dude, and I saw wild stuff. There were things going on in houses. One guy had, like, a fucking, like, reptiles in his house. You know, like, chickens Yo, the, the, running the, across. The place that I moved into now, when my landlord, who's, like, a family friend, when he, they, they left, and he, like, went up there to clean it up and shit, there was over 400 fish tanks. I didn't know this. Yeah, like, 400 what? aquariums that he was, like, you had to, like... You had to, like, walk through it like a maze because there was so many fucking fish tanks. That's insane. And he was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with it? He had to, like, they, they just left it and just bounced. And he was like, I have to now get rid of 400 fish tanks that had, like, weird dead fish and shit in it. People are oh, weird, man. Dude. When you uh, David Sedaris has a story about uh, when he was, like, coming up in New York, kind of kind of same kind of deal, where he was, to, to pay the bills, he was a house cleaner. And he just talked about all the different houses he was in and how weird everything was. And, like... I guess it's kind of one of those things that people talk about. Where it's like, oh, yeah, you, you work in retail. You deal with a lot of people. People are fucking insane Crazy in people. every aspect of the world. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, they are. You, you, if you get a chance, if you have any job where you're looking into other people's literal lives or, or I mean, you will find the worst in humanity. <laughs> no doubt. You, do you, no. We were talking about this a couple weeks ago. Do you think that in general the world is a good place or a bad place? Like, I or, think or are people more... How do we phrase it? Like, like for the most part, you're going to go about your business. You're going to wake up tomorrow, go to work, see your kids. You're not going to get murdered, probably, you know. You'll probably live your life and it'll be okay. So does that mean the world in general is an okay place? Or do you think that most people are assholes? In, you know, luckily in comedy, it's taken me not only across the United States, but over the, across the ocean, the world. And I think for the most part in my experience of doing what I do and entertaining and doing stand-up, from what I saw, I think most people are good, but the the percentage that's not really it's actually like right. It's like so so it's a smaller percentage of people that are are haters and that are evil and that want to see things just burn. But it, that small percentage is such a malignant cancer mm -hmm. that it feels like more. And I think that that's the shit that we're seeing now in the world. I think for the most part, all different cultures right now. I think black, white. Uh, whatever, Asian, purple. I think everybody's watching the TV and watching their phones going, wow, this is, the world's a little fuck? fucked up. Right yeah, now. yeah. Well, but I really do. I think that everybody's going, whoa, 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 things are getting, this is nuts. But what they're showing, and as far as what people see is, oh, that's the world right there. Right, you know, right. When it's just basically a few cities and a few blocks and a few of these like militia cults pretty much. And we're and we're thinking, but no, dude. I think when you sit and you talk to somebody and you could actually talk to them. I know this, sound, this shit sounds corny and cliche, but I believe that if you sit with somebody and you have a beer with them, uh, whether they don't believe what you believe socially and politically, but you can actually just try to put yourself in their shoes for a second, and they do the same with you, and you do try to come to some some middle ground where you're kind of because I have family members that are are. are are liberal and I have family members that are very conservative and I've seen them interact and sometimes you'll catch a glimpse of them kind of like nodding to each other and be like oh I get that and you're like yeah it's just because people just yeah, don't but talk you're, they're only willing to extend that courtesy to like family members or friends everyone else is just like oh, you're a stranger fuck you I'm gonna shoot you with my gun from dicks you know <laughs> yeah, you're never gonna be at a barbecue playing beanbag toss with a guy that's completely different from you and right and you're already coming from like-minded yeah 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 yeah, so I, I think that, but nobody's really talking, and I and, and the divide, dude. The, I was talking to a couple of comedians about the, the 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 way the country is so divided right now. It's it, it makes you almost people are drawing a line in the sand. Or I think back in the day, you could be on different sides and still have oh everything's it's okay. Now, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now well, it's you know what we need to get back to. There was the time where it was like you don't talk about religion, you don't talk about politics, <laughs> and then yes. we started talking about all those things. And now I think we need to go back to not talking about those things. <laughs> do you remember? Do you guys remember the movie Sleepers? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm, no. And, and, yeah, Sleepers. Dark was movie. Yeah. It, it was. It was brutal. It was about the kids that were molested by the, and, and then they found them, and then it, it's brutal. And but remember, they were in a bar, and something came up politically, or and and another guy at the bar just goes, "Hey, hey, hey, we don't talk we about don't that." We do here. that here. Well, yeah, we. It's not. We don't, you know, you could talk sports, you could talk like, we're not, we're not doing that here. And it kind of was like, I was thinking about that, Kev, where I'm like, yeah, it should be that again. Right? Like social media, real life, just pff, we don't do it anymore. The world would be a much happier place.
the world would be a happier place and we would definitely be. But but to answer your question, I think for the most part, um, the brainwashing that's gone on and, and, you know, you have CNN battling Fox News. They're they're going back and forth. So that just makes people. But I think if you took that away, for the most part, deep down inside, I would say people are good. Once you get in the pool and you drink, you know, your mother-in-law's special cocktail, everybody gets along. <laughs> You know what? Listen, I'll hug anybody once I have two or three of those. <laughs> Amen, <laughs> brother. And I'm, a, I'm in a nice chilly pool at 9, 95 degrees outside. <laughs> I love it, dude. I appreciate the time. So we got the Verzi Effect is the podcast. Dude, I called it is the YouTube series. Uh, tickets, yep. if, if anything, you know, ever materializes, God willing, uh, yeah, Paul Verzi. Coming up at the Funny Bone in Connecticut in September, Salt Lake City in October. Both of those right now are still on. The YouTube channel we just launched is doing great. And the dude, I called it right now with KFC. Uh, the, the episode's doing great. Your prediction of the Mets owner coming back into the picture is looking really good. God and willing, you said, dude. You said, that, you said that weeks and weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and Tom Green predicted that he's going to find Bigfoot, and he was serious. <laughs> yeah, he's a big time oh, truther. Yeah, him and Pedroia. Yeah, Dustin you know, Pedroia. Pedroia, Pedroia's a big one. Yeah, like do, Wait, no what, fucking what, around. Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia. Thinks it was Bigfoot. Oh, oh but, yeah. and, and he he's like, how could it not be real? It's on a flag or something like that. <laughs> We've like, seen a picture, dude. He's like, in so. Oregon, they have it on a flag, or it's on their state. I, there's there's something about it where he's just like, it's a hundred percent real. Like he gets mad if you question him on it. He's like, yeah, of course it's fucking real. That's great. Well, dude, thank you. And, and yes, and, and I got so many other people on the dude I called it thing. Um, and the special right now, man, it's it's doing great. There's a resurgence because of the pandemic. So I appreciate it, man. You got it, dude. We'll talk soon, all right? Thank all right, you so much, Paul. Have a good one. Bye.